Hey, welcome back. How's everyone doing? It is a Mets ball good. My name is Andre. Let me slide this down. How y'all doing? Welcome. Uh, happy holidays, everyone. How's it going? Welcome. Hello, CML. How's everyone doing today? It is the 30th of December 2020. We're almost at the end of the year. It's been quite a year, so we're getting there. Um, hopefully y'all are doing well. Uh, I've had a lovely holidays. Glad to be streaming at this moment. How's everyone doing? Um, Rosenheim, hello chat. Happy 2021. Yeah, we're almost there. We're almost there, aren't we? Tanuki, this is unexpected. Is a New Year's Eve in Canada already? Perfect background for some model painting. Yo, what are you painting? Um, no, we got New Year's the same day as everyone. It's in October. Uh, and uh, so we've been 2021 for a couple months now. Uh, daylight savings actually makes that even more complicated. Yo, Sean, what up? Hello, Andre. Welcome. Parallel morning, never know. Also, solemn daytime stream. Yeah, totally. How's everyone doing? So I goofed up pretty bad um, over the last sort of weeks. Normally, we stream on Thursday nights, and I just did not look at the calendar because I was like, oh, come Monday, I'm on holiday, and then timing doesn't matter. And then I realized Thursday night was on New Year's Eve. Um, so wasn't really available to stream then and I don't really keep up my Twitter, so I can't really message it. I thought I would stream sometime in the day during the week, but it's been really busy. Um, so I'm glad to be streaming now because like now Thursday when I normally stream is now New Year's Eve, which also obviously is also, uh, it's going to be busy and I don't know if people are, uh, <laughs> birthday stream for me. You're too kind, movable. Happy birthday. Can we get a happy birthday in chat? That's awesome. Hey, happy birthday. Andre, what up? Should old acquaintance be forgot and mumble, mumble, drunken, stammering? I love that song. Old Lang Syne is a really, really, really nice song. Um, I think a lot of people find it to be sad. I'm a big fan of it. I think it's great. It slaps. It's really good. Yo, Dunch97, happy birthday. Have a nice day. Yo. Hey, Dunch, welcome. Thanks for this, sharing the birthday wishes. Happy birthday, move all object. That's awesome. Hey, cheers. Uh, how's everyone's holiday been? It's been like, so uh, normally I would go and see my, my, my family, my parents specifically, they don't live uh, in this province, we'd go back to English speaking Canada, um, but we didn't this year and still had quite a nice time. It's just Maddie and I here and then we did a bunch of like Zoom calls and, and hung out on the internet, which is really nice, which is really nice. Yo Rash, what's up? Are you not live on Twitch? No, I should be. I, I should be. I'm reading the Twitch chat. I'm assuming it's working. I got the notification on my phone. Um, yeah, should be okay. I hope so. Hopefully you're doing well. Uh, holidays, otherwise, it's been pretty good. It's been pretty nice. It's been nice to have some time off, um, which is something that I think I really needed in my professional life, just getting some time off to hang out and, and uh, hang out with people. Uh, Maddie and I started, uh, people have been doing 20 by 20s or 10 by 10s that we landed on 15 by 10 which means we've taken a list of 15 different board games and we have to play 10 games of each of them and we're recording not so much the results but like how people feel about them and what happened to make this like really nice journal and it's been really nice so far we barely started we're maybe like it's 150 games right because that's what the math works out to um and we're i think like 10 in so we're getting there Yo, Rash, welcome to Twitch. Oh, yeah, you are. I just didn't get a Twitch notification. I usually do. Maybe check if that bell is, like, turned on. Because sometimes, I don't know. YouTube, excuse me, has a worse job at it. But sometimes it, like, unnotifies you. I don't know. My son got Crisis Protocol for Xmas, and I'm painting it up for him. What is Crisis Protocol? Crisis Protocol. Sounds like a Marvel thing. Oh, it is a Marvel thing. Cool. So you got to paint up, like, okay. Assuming, yeah, assuming it is stuff from the Marvel Universe, are you required either by Marvel law or by your son to paint things in canon accurate ways or are we making Orange Hulk? And I think Orange Hulk is probably a real thing. But maybe not Orange She-Hulk, I don't know. That's cool. I've never done any miniature stuff. I wonder what like the, the gateway into it is. It always seems very uh, expensive and the mall uh, games workshop never seems that friendly. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe they were too friendly. Um, you know, speaking of Netrunner, though, it's been a minute. And I'll be honest, I've been kind of scared to get into this uh, system gateway stuff. Or so, sorry, salvage memories. I'm excited for system gateway. Uh, I don't know. Last time we played, like, we had a good time. But, like, then we started playing against, like, Medium and Parasite and Indexing. And I think I started getting salty. What's the meta like out there, y'all? What's it like? 
Cause I'm scared. I don't know if I'm. 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 Uh, maybe I've been like avoiding it. Maybe I've been hiding from the meta. Is it like that bad? What's it look like? Is this the mix-up everybody wanted? It doesn't look too anarch out there. I'm worried all these Jintekis are just like you know horizontal spam. Oh no, it's daytime and I can't play on JNet at work. Oh, that's a bummer. Somebody needs to make one of those plugins where they make JNet look like, you know, Excel spreadsheets, because I think that's what most people's jobs are. Can't show Andre my next ice deck. Oh, god damn it. All by the book for Crisis Protocol. I think an orange Hulk would trigger him. Uh, okay. That's a, uh, whatever. They did a good enough job, the Marvel folk. Not that you can't do better, but uh, maybe. Okay, let's not limit ourselves here with the colors. What's the most New Year optimism themed ID? Building a better world? Brad, what up? Yeah, okay, optimism for the New Year. So that's just really interesting because I think it's really easy to paint corpses like, you know, bad. But there's some good corpse, right? Salvage memory is unfun. Sorry, but I'd rather see SC21 or something. Yeah, Rosenheim, that's okay. Um, like, there's no need to apologize for that take. I'm I am honestly like really worried that it's gonna like the meta is just gonna rotate too much about power or too much around powerful cards like medium and parasite and indexing, which is kinda like they used to back in the day. And I'm not excited for that. I feel like I'd rather play the old meta than if it gets too tilted in one direction. But yeah, unfortunately you're not gonna see SC21 for a bit. It's gonna take some time. But that's okay. That makes sense. Uh I just want to search by IDs. Let's look at that. Um what am I doing? This is what we're doing. So for Christmas, uh, Maddie lovingly got me a new mouse. Uh, last you saw, my mouse wasn't working, and this one clicks on things real good. It drags, it double clicks, you can even triple click if you're really like stunting on people. And the clicking sound is very pleasant. It is a soprano of sorts. I'm into it. Identity side corp. Full card. It's way too sensitive too, and I'm, I'm on board. Okay, new miracles for a new world. That's not a bad name for the new year we want to kind of do that if you need uh what else is good protection guaranteed very kind of negative uh tone but positive sentiment or maybe the other way around otherwise shaping the future that's pretty good but it got banned uh a lot of these are relatively positive besides like selective mind mapping that's just like yeah we're fucking evil uh let's go yeah, that's weird that's how you spelled engineered but i guess that makes sense Tomorrow today. Tomorrow today? Huh. Huh. <laughs> or dreams are real. These are nice. But then the PR team runs these, don't they? I think building a better world is probably one of the better ones. Stronger together is also like a pretty good sentiment. Yo, fighting Walloon, what up? Ag Infusion, the good corp. Yeah, why not? I don't know what they do. I feel like they all make food. But maybe that's just me generalizing. ASMR mouse. It's nice. It's a really nice click. I've been clicking on stuff I don't need to just to hear it. I miss these powerful cards and wouldn't be paying attention to Never if they weren't around. A throwback wasn't around. Don't like the new Nisa cards for the most part, so SM is what gets me back to the game. All right. Um, yo, what, what's uh, what's the beef you got with the Nisa cards? I I'm, don't want to put you on the spot. You don't have to answer that if you don't want to, but I, I love to hear people's opinions on that sort of stuff. For what it's worth, like I know I'm not... Whenever it comes to like Eternal or any format that has like a higher power level, I think I would kind of go to the lower power level in terms of what I like. So uh, it's not surprised to me that some of the stronger cards coming back ruffles my feathers. I'm more of like a League of Legends guy than a Dota guy, if that kind of makes sense, if anything. Uh-oh. Thanks, Walloon. Yeah, 421 as well. We'll get it. Don't worry. If only bots could feel my my hate or whatever that racist line is. Gone. Get out of here. Thank you. Oh no, no, it's a bot. Sorry, on there's a there's a bot on Twitch. I think Stronger Together is probably the most apt for 2020. Plus, I can't remember what it does. Oh, it, it makes the math more fun. Stronger Together is pretty good. The the idea. In terms of not Netrunner. Life improved. Ah, that's pretty good. Oh man, I kind of miss Mati, but we shouldn't, should we? I just talked about I don't like powerful cards and I miss Mati. Mati was fun though. It was awful to play against if you're not playing tier one. Sustainable growth, that's a good idea. You starting to get the really the best one? Future forward, that's not bad, but these are the, the draft ideas. You can't really do that. The world reimagined, you know, that's good stuff. 
Investing in the future, okay. Builder of nations because we built it, building a better world. The last one, in fact, is good. Find the majority in ESA cards to be too underpowered and boring and so overdone. See some chip, which is way too qualified. What do you mean by qualified? You're a splashing high variance play. I miss ABT. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, that's fair. ABT is a hell of a card. <laughs> it was really exciting to play ABT. It really, really was. Too underpowered and boring, though. But that's the thing, though. Like, I, I don't mean to like pick a fight with you, but I think out of any set that has been released by FFG or Nisei, I feel like, man, maybe the first part of the the, the Nisei set wasn't exactly that, but I feel like the majority of cards that Nisei printed were a playable power level, which is much different than anything else we've seen before. Yo, Trickster, what's going on? How you doing? Welcome. Yeah, I guess we could play a Stronger Together deck, but that's probably pretty boring. Or Building a Better World, which is also probably pretty boring. Mm, I don't even know what we're doing today. God, I miss play this game. Yo, uh, it's still really good. You should jump in if you can. Um, I don't know if you know at what point you played, but Jintekin.net is still kicking. Oh, I have it open here. Uh, people are still playing. It's all free. There's new stuff coming out. It's really great. Too much text on Simon Chip and Clone Chip was really simple and clear. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's weird though. Like the too much check simple text stuff. Like, I feel like people have different points on that that never seem to. I'm gonna say cogent again. Like the idea of like, okay, Rizeki might be an issue, but Rizeki is very simple and elegant. Uh, for what it's worth, I think Simul Ship is a really cool design, and I, I like that it gives you a reward for doing something more interesting. I don't know. Infinite power creep is frustrating. I'm glad Nisei toned it down. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that too. I don't know. I think the thing that I like most for somebody who at least abstractly liked a more creative deck building, if you can say that about oneself, if one can say that about oneself, is the idea is that like there's very few cards in the least, latest Nisei set that I, I look at and be like, I'm never going to build something with that in it, even if it's not tier one, as opposed to like, you know, there's a lot of really bad stuff in like Red Sand, the early cycles, uh, Flashpoint, where you'd be like, there's no reason that this could ever be compelling. Um, and I think that's really cool. I don't experience Nisei say Ice is toned down. Yeah. Uh, Ice got way better as the game went on. Like, oh my god, way better. Rizeki is like my least favorite card. Yo, how's prepaid voice pad going, doing out there, y'all? Is it still a Rizeki or not? Because I was reading some comments and I think some people were like, yo, it's actually pretty good in my like Mystic Miami, which is another prepaid voice pad, kind of like Anarch deck, but I honestly don't know. Additional qualifications of cards might be a bear to read, but it does open up the ability to create more interesting cards without breaking the game. Yeah, I agree. It is definitely a bit more uh, like taxing. It's not too easy to look. It's less easy to look at than clone chip. But I think it does evolve creative play and it kind of exaggerates or accentuates the shape of bullshit in a really cool way. And the idea that you can recur at, you know, a three credit install cost, that's huge. That makes the card better in terms of the restriction. I'm looking at you, Cash, right? I dislike Ice Heavy Netrunner. Whoa, that's a weird take. I didn't think you'd have. Do you mean like acid spam or do you mean like you don't like Glacier? Because I don't like heavy Glacier, I guess. I've seen comments that PPVD can run out of steam. P PPVP? I would believe it. I just don't see why prepaid voice pad is necessary. So this is the conversation, right? Perpaid. I always say prepair is perpair and it's catching up with me. A prepaid voice pad looks like this. Uh, it gives you credit every turn to hardware on one. And I don't know in the format whether this is worth a slot because it just feels like the fourth or seventh slot of like other cards you could play. Like obviously Rizeki is really good, takes up MU and a bit of influence. Uh, but uh, other things like Mystic Miami, Mystic doesn't even get play, but Mystic is basically a prepaid voice pad plus. Um, you can only have one though, and you can have three prepaids. So I don't know, it's a bit different. What site or app do you play on? Yo, Young, thanks for answering it. Yeah, Young has the link there, but it's just jinteki.net, as Young typed in the chat. I loved Acid Spam. Oh, that's weird, man. Maybe that's why you're so excited about this format, because it has, like, turtlebacks and stuff. I think you're definitely in the minority, but that doesn't make your, your point any less valid. But I know a lot of people, obviously, detest Acid Spam. And I only like Acid Spam if I'm playing a competitive deck. If I'm playing an uncompetitive deck, like not a tier 1 deck against Acid Spam, I think I don't have a good time. But if I'm playing a tier 1 deck against Acid Spam, yeah, I think it is actually very interesting. I did get the chance to play in the tournament, but I thought Throwback was a nice idea rather than just bringing back specific very powerful cards. I'm not sure how much variance there was amongst the tournament decks, though. Yeah, CML... Um, so this is something that came up a lot in the tournament. So Throwback was the tournament that Eric ran. We had this on the channel a couple uh, weeks ago now at this point. But the idea is you could play one rotated card. 
And uh, also, if you listen to the Shadowland podcast, it's like heavily redacted, but Eric gives his hot take on this format. And like he compares it, unfortunately, has to compare it to his format. But the idea is like playing one powerful card uh, is a lot. Uh, I don't know. It's a lot different than like allowing even just a pair of power cards, like the per suite of these, and you can play any combination thereof. I don't know. Uh, point being that throwback to me, like brought back that restricted card vibe. It was kind of really exciting, and it was one powerful card as opposed to like you know something closer to Eternal, where it's like yeah, allow a lot more you know busted stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I I feel like I really enjoyed um, throwback. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Throwback was really fun. I have to learn to play online. Yo, uh, Trickster, uh, it's... Okay, so Jinteki has no tutorialization. I take it if you've played the game before, that's not going to be an issue. But if you're new to Jinteki.net, you can just make a new game and label it, right? Like like teaching game or learning game or new to JNet. And people will come in and they'll understand the title and people will play and they'll like walk you through the controls and won't expect you to play quickly. Like, uh, it's really good. It's a really good community. Um, definitely do that if you haven't. Um, for what it's worth, like this doesn't teach you the game. And I honestly would rather teach people on tabletop simulator than on jna just because you can be like this is an agenda and put it on the table and talk about it uh but jna is really good once you have the rules of the game because it automates everything ideally reduces the need to have the interaction for ruling open the next tab all the time yo gregory what's up I was recently interviewed on a podcast where i was asked about a major bummer in my life i talked for 20 minutes about the death of netrunner and the fomo of never getting to the tournament scene gregory yo uh welcome do you have a link to that podcast yo the, the like you know the perceived fmg death of netrunner was obviously like really fucking sad i remember that moment uh really heavily i was at work we were about to go to e3 we were like doing a, a meeting at work uh e3 was like the next week and it was on a friday and i remember just being like Ugh. And, like you know nothing really mattered at that point i just had to go for a walk it was really really bad and we had a stream here too where i think i got like pretty emotional um it's not edited yet okay let us know when that comes up but yeah uh for what it's worth like the tournament scene isn't that different uh from what it was till now like worlds has equal if not better attendee uh at attendance than it classically did obviously 2020 is i think a bigger issue to the tournament scene than ffg not supporting the game officially so like if you want to get into netrunner into the tournament scene it is not a problem you can still definitely do it uh, you just have to get involved. Hopefully uh, in the next, I don't know, I'm not a doctor. Uh, whenever that happens, try and get involved. Because the tournament scene, honestly, right now, is is uh, it doesn't feel any different. If not, in some cases, it's a lot better. How am I so lucky to get a Metro Good stream on my Wednesday morning? July is, yo, well, happy holidays. Hopefully you're doing well. We just haven't streamed in a while, have we? It was sad times. It was sad times, wasn't it? Has anyone made a JNet walkthrough for new players, first timers yet going to the UI? Yo, Deadstock, welcome. And Walloon uh, posted an Eric Twice uh, article. Eric Twice actually is continually doing articles about board games and stuff. You can see it on like r slash board games. How to play online with JNet from 2019. Uh, this probably hasn't changed. I did not know this existed, but this is exactly what you need. Yo, Walloon, thanks for the link. That's amazing. That's amazing. Shit, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, to play on JNet, this will do it. To teach you the game, this article probably won't do it. I would say definitely doesn't do it. But uh, this seems pretty good as long as, as like it is a year out of date. But um, looking at a glance, like the UI is the same, the commands are the same. This is fantastic. JNet auto handles a lot of the bookkeeping, etc. So it can be tough to learn the mechanics of the game. But after you know how to play JNet, super easy. Yes, hundred percent. I don't think it's the easiest to play. Oh God, it's the next ice deck. What are they doing? Uh, it's not the easiest to learn on, but once you know what you're doing, it, it's so good. Something I can share with folks is great. Yeah, this is really good. This is really good. And I think Eric continually posts articles on this website. I went to a regional the day after they announced the end of Netrunner. Weird vibe. Oh man, that is pretty weird. Yeah, look, the article just came out uh, a couple days ago now. Ooh, ants. All right. I imagine the amount of missed gameplay triggers when we can do IRL play again will be wild. Yeah, it depends if you're playing Geist or not. I don't know. I don't do the best job of reading the chat log, but like, I feel like playing on Octagon and now JNet actually maybe helped me with the triggers. Nah, you're right, I'm probably gonna fuck it up. <laughs> well, 5 p.m. viewing for me, what time is it there? Yo, Lloyd, it's like 11.44, welcome. It's uh, the middle of the afternoon, that's why the camera's all blue, because the natural light outside is not color balanced. 
Oh my god, Octagon. Did you play on Octagon, Young? That was so long ago. Octagon Netrunner was so good. So for those who don't know, Octagon is a platform that people have made to... Uh, oh, wait, what's his Kiv? Is Kiv's channel still up? Um, Octagon was a channel that... Uh, it was a platform. Shit, is Kiv's channel not... It doesn't exist? Am I missing this? Somebody must help me. Oh, Chris M, of course. Uh, anyways, Octagon was a channel, a platform in which people would like mod their own games on it so you could play. It's where most online people... Uh... Yo, Zach, how's it going, man? Thank you. Uh, it's where people used to play Netrunner back in the day, uh, before Jinteki.net. And it was really cool. For what it's worth, Octagon is still alive and well in certain circles. I think Doomtown, most organized play, uses Octagon uh, to play Doomtown online. But it was like really cool. The sound effects are incredibly memorable to me and probably a lot of other people. But it was also a lot of shortcut heavy stuff. Like to run R&D was like F3 or F2 for HQ, stuff like that. Like there's a lot of commands all over the keyboard. And you did feel a bit more like a hacker or a sysop in a very naive way. Uh, it kind of slapped. It was really, really cool. And then JNet started. I remember when JNet started. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to go to JNet. Octagon's really good. But JNet automated everything. I don't know. It's like if you want to see the opponent's hand, you actually have to click on this tab to see like how many cards in their hand. I guess it does say up here, right? Seven cards. Uh, but it was really fun. It was really cool. The sound effects are also kick ass. Luckily, guys will probably be rotated by the time IRL play becomes common again, likely. Yeah, enjoy your E3 feedback and plans, huh? I had to print out a shortcut list by my computer to play on Octagon. Yo, you were definitely not the only person to do that. There were so many people. You can literally physically move cars around. Like, it doesn't lock it to a server. Like, you see how uh, Chris here is dragging cards around? Also, like, obviously, huge shout out to Chris. Chris was such a big deal uh, to so many people in Netrunner, let alone myself. For you don't know, Chris, um, I think, put out daily videos for literally, like, four years. Chris also uh, created uh, Meteor, which is used to be his channel, then Stimhack bought it, which was like a deck building, a uh, deck uh, uploading channel. His tone was like super calming and and, and very, uh, I don't know, like everyone said he was Mr. Rogers like, and I kind of get it. Uh, he, he was just kind of the coolest dude. Never met him. Um, from the East Coast of Canada, if I'm not mistaken. Sounds like he's from the East Coast of Canada. I remember Octagon from uh, Game of Thrones 1.0 days. Didn't realize there was a Netrunner scene. Yeah, there was. This is where everybody played Netrunner. And what's so cool, too, is you see all these players that, like, played back in the day. Um, excuse me. Who played uh, back in the day. A lot of them still do play. And you'll run into handles of people who, like, are still, still like, very competitive players. It's really cool. Anyways. We've, gone, we've come really far. Simply the best content creator of his day. Yeah, he really was. He was really good. I watched so much of Kiv, and then I watched a lot of Ben Nee, who you might be more familiar with Ben Nee. I think Ben Nee continued to produce content a bit later than, than Chris. Maybe not, actually. But Ben Nee also did very like, regular uploads. Uh, he was, like, the fi second finalist at Worlds in, like, what, 2016, 2016, 2017? Ben Nee, YouTube. I miss Ben's videos. Yeah, Ben's videos were really good. Um, where can we find them? What's Ben Nee's channel? Bayoken, yeah, right? I even brought one of Bayo Ben Nee's, like, decks to Worlds to play. Um, oh, wow, he's still doing stuff. I didn't know that. What is this game? This is not Slate Aspire. What's VOTV? I didn't realize he was still making stuff that was, like, non Neverner based The viewership is not that bad. Damn, but Benny was like really, really obviously a, a top tier a tournament player, came second at Worlds. But on top of that, he would do a lot of stuff at the beginning of his videos where he would uh, actually do like a PowerPoint presentation and talk about fundamentals and talk about like uh, gameplay stuff, which is something I know at the time I was more interested in doing uh, to make things a bit more educational as opposed to like, here's gameplay, here's gameplay, where I used to upload just like games and tournament coverage. Uh, and it was really cool. Obviously, he's like a really good player. Um, but like he would have, you know, like slideshows, the turtle that could, an innovative deck. Yeah, Ben, I, I don't think I've ever had the pleasure of meeting Ben either, but, uh, absolute, like making really, really fantastic content. And Ben would like upload very, very regularly as well. This would be always like when I was in college, like every night I'd put one of these on while I worked or like fall asleep or something. It was great. It's really good. Ben's video got me into watching high level Netrunner. Fuck yeah. 
Yeah, there's a lot of people that made a lot of really good content back in the day. It's like, there was, there was a shit ton, actually. I'm going to forget other people. Like, Teamwork Cast was making uh, uh, really, really, really good stuff back in there. There's some really good podcasts. I listened to a lot of Terminal 7, Run Last Click. Uh, I never got into the competitive podcasts. Like, I never listened to the winning agenda. But from what I understand, they were the competitive podcast. Ben's channel is what led me to finding JNet. Oh, heck yeah. Surprise midday stream to talk. How's it going? Awesome, Phil. What up? Thank you for celebrating the content. Yo, Phil, I saw your cake. I didn't see who won, but I enjoyed you. I enjoyed the 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 stuff I saw. I need to catch up on the last episode. Ben did a lot of Gloomhaven for a while. Yeah, I didn't realize that. That's really cool. That's good viewership. That's really good viewership. But like, if, if someone told me like, hey, you could sit down and Ben is going to teach you how to play a game to a competitive level, even if it's something like Gloomhaven, where like playing at a competitive level is by no means necessary. I would fucking do it. I'd sit down and do it, dude. Ben, tell me how to play this game. Oh, man. There's a dude in my meta. His name is Eric. And, like, I've had so many ideas. Of, like, we should make a new channel. We should do Arkham Horror. We should do all this sort of stuff. And I just haven't had the time to put it together. And I need to fix that in my life at some point. But, like, for instance... I have a friend who has a thousand hours into uh, Slay the Spire and he's got all the achievements, does like the level 20 ascension runs. And like, I want to sit down with him and make good content where he can be like, hey, dude, teach us how to do this. Because like, I don't fuck with ascension and Slay the Spire and I probably should. But this guy's like a maestro at it. And there's definitely a lot we can learn. Anyways, this stuff's really good. Making this sort of high level play accessible is like the most important thing. And I don't think this channel exactly does that. But maybe that's a short set. Anyways, there's a lot of good Netrunner content. Octagons is really good. Bad Publicity was great. I never really listened to Bad Publicity too much. Um, I know, I think the most exposure I had to Bad Publicity was that one Max deck, which kind of kicked ass. Are you the last old school Neverrunner content creator left? Even Code has quit now, hasn't he? I think Code still does stuff every once in a while. I don't know. Maybe I just see Code's memes on Facebook, and I, I think he's doing well off of that. Um, like, I, I think he's doing well and doing Neverrunner content if he's still making memes. Um, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. There was a while when I started making content where I actually stopped watching other Netrunner content just because it took up too much time. Like I was spending so much time editing my own videos and like doing my own stuff. And I used to spend a lot of time editing when we used to put out like three videos a week. And we used to do like, you know, footage of, of actual tournaments with like motion graphics and editing and VO and all that sort of stuff. That like I kind of stopped watching Netrunner content. So I don't know. Dan streamed the throwback tournament. Oh yeah, he, he streamed his, because he was playing. He streamed his, his, his hands at least, his games. Um, I don't know. Just his games. Jorbs is goaded STS. Need to convince him to play ANR. He actually did. Jorbs um jumped onto um played some JNet like a couple months ago this year. He jumped onto JNet with some friend or something. I don't know. I remember watching a bit of it. Been a while since I've stopped by. I haven't played any Neverrunner lately. How's the meta looking? Yo, Jeremy, I don't actually know because there's a big shift to the meta that happened um, a couple weeks ago and I've barely played since. I think we played like one evening since of it. I'm actually kind of scared about this because they basically they they mixed up the meta by reintroducing some powerful cards and I was honestly happy when some of these cards rotated. So I don't know. We're going to find out today. Oh, really? I watched Jerps all the time, but I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. No, it happened. It wasn't very big. But it definitely did happen. Yeah, check us out. So Calvin, well, I think, I don't, I think, is that game designer Calvin Wong? I don't know. So 11 hours, 15 minutes, I go to stream on with Jorbs teaching the best game ever, hashtag Netrunner. So this was back in March. Yeah, this is Calvin from FFG Games. Yeah, so this guy at least is involved in the board game industry. At FFG Games. Uh, anyway, so that happened. I don't think it was too big of a deal. I tuned in a bit for it. They played a couple games and left. But yeah, Jorbs is obviously incredibly good at STS. Wasn't Prana OP that night? Yeah, we did play Prana. Oh, he did just sick. Really hope you bring back the GNK tournament coverage with all the edits and videos where in person play comes back. Those vids are great. Oh, things dead. It's difficult because they're pretty time intensive. So I think if we're going to do that, I have to scale back some of the production efforts. I've also since then become better at it, so it goes a bit faster. But yeah, it's something I'll definitely look into when we get back to play. Calvin was Nisei when I was. He works for FFG now. Oh, cool. Um, I forget what I was going to say. That's probably not that important. 
Hey, Andre, just dropping in to say I look forward to your streams. Really enjoyed your commentary in the throwback tournament. That was a super fun tournament. Yo, Michael, thank you. That's very kind. Glad you enjoyed the tournament. I'm, like, really stoked that people can just, like, drop in and, and enjoy that sort of stuff. Throwback is a... It's not too hard of a format to understand, um, but I think it's really fun for both old and new crowds alike. Those who get to see old cards, those who get to see new cards, it's really, really fun. Anywho. All right. All right. Oh, yeah, I think I know what I was going to say. It's it's something that, like, a lot of people get asked because uh, everybody loves Netrunner, and I think Netrunner has a place in some of the, like, public zeitgeist of being like the board game uh geek top one game on or top 10 game of uh for like a couple of years back to in 2020 it's 2012 and 2013 2014 when it was like really a hot commodity outside of like even the dedicated uh competitive scene and like every once in a while you get that like there's clips from like a day nine stream where people are like hey day nine you should try netrunner and like i don't think it ever comes to anything even though modernly it could easily do on jnet but they'd be like, yeah, I've heard that game is amazing. I don't have the time to put into it or stuff like that. But obviously, it'd be so cool. Maybe when the new cards come out, when the, there's an easier entrance point, that like a bit of exposure. Maybe you just need one big name somewhere to play the game. And then like, oh, more people get into it. I don't know. He works for Evagina. Yeah, look, I think he does. I think he does. Okay. Um, we're going to play some Netrunner. This is just a Hoshiko deck um, from Berlin and Friends. Are you playing a game later today? Like Netrunner? Yeah. Yeah, we should be playing now. And then that clip where he goes on about Netrunner is great. Does he go on about Netrunner? So I don't think I remember that. I remember him me messaging it. Daga, what up? Day 9 streaming ANR would be the best. It really would be. It'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> should probably add Prana to this deck. All right, so this is... Dave, Gene K, and Berlin and Friends. I don't recognize any of these people, which shouldn't be a surprise, but I'm assuming this is from European television. Uh, and right now it looks pretty basic in terms of like good stuff Anarch. It is running special order, which is flashy and interesting because uh, we only have one of every breakers and it's a really nice way to get N'Golo. That's actually a really nice uh, package, I think. Two paper clip and all of these. Okay. You can't special order a medium or Rizeki. That's fine. We've Gachapon. A single medium makes Gatchapon a bit dodgier. It just kind of limits your options, I guess. I guess you can always shuffle it back in, huh? Hunting Grounds. I would assume we see Ice Carver in a Parasite list, but we have no Parasites. And then otherwise, it's just good stuff. We'll play this. I don't know if it's LRF or IRF 33 Day 9. Playing Netrunner would be great. I think you would like the game a lot. That's the thing. is like... Anybody who's played Netrunner it can very confidently say it's like one of the best card games and then the issue is like just exposing people to it because like once you do that it does all the heavy lifting for you you just need to get people to that point so we got to figure out a way to do it we got to figure out a way to get into like I don't know get Brian Kibler to play Netrunner or something he says his friends play it and how awesome it sounds but yeah he never played as far as I know damn in our is fantastic but the barrier to entry is so high we really need dual decks yeah Brad that's the idea that should be happening in a couple months with the uh, system gateway stuff. So it's like, pick this up. This is all you need. Enjoy. And I'm hoping uh, for the best. Okay, this is the deck that I made my buddy Mildstart have been testing lately. It's one of the many variations on the companion Hoshiko. We think companion engine combined with Rizeki provides a strong late game. So we have Keiko, and then we have companions. We have a single trickster, which is great, and three paladin Poemo for setup, which is very good as well. Uh, otherwise, we have Liberated, which some decks don't have that. We don't have Daily Casts, and man, Daily Cast is such a good card. It's really hard to cut it, but I guess that's where the drip economy we have from Keiko and Friends is. But uh, Daily Cast, honestly, is like super underrated, I think. Especially when you install it for cheap. But let's do it. Ice Cover has become an auto-include with the Heat Breakers for me. Yeah, it depends on the matchup, but you're right. Like, the idea that this lowers the strength by one saves you three credits in a lot of ways. And I feel like with modern cards that are at five strength or even four strength, things like, I'm looking at, like, Engram Flush. Uh, that can be a really big deal. But uh, some of the other ones don't have breakpoints that matter, right? Some of them don't. Which one? It's like one of DNA Tracker or one of uh, Anansi don't actually have breakpoints that matter. I forget. But you're right, it does a lot of work. You install it gently once and it pays off for itself in two breaks. If not more. Or less. Uh, big bro. Okay. Ah, uh, it's a corp deck. Piss. What well, rotate out when Gateway comes in? If I'm not mistaken, uh, the Sand Sand Cycle rotates out and... Ooh, I'm not actually sure, but there's a chance... 
honor and profit. I don't know. Trickster Taga has to be my favorite card. It's a good card, man. You picked a good one. Sunset Cycle and Hunter Profit. Okay. That's what I was thinking. I don't want to say anything too confidently if I don't know. I'm not a journalistic source half the time. I'm just guessing. I'll tell you what I'm guessing, though. At least. Let's go that far. Uh, Hoshiko. Okay. Single hunting grounds feels good. No one home. That's hot tech. No one's going to see source us. Uh, do we have any tech against horizontal asset spam decks? Yeah, we want three Rizekis and we have Hoshiko and Dreamnet. That's probably good enough. Just because of the name. It's a good card. Picked a good name. Oh, how's everyone's holiday been? Has it been nice? Have you had the time off you wanted? Are you able to see family where you're at? Are you able to just like, you know, stay at home? Has your mail shown up? There's a couple gifts that didn't show up on time, but the mail system's pretty bad. Right now, like, it's no surprise. Pretty soon every card I own will be rotated. Ah, oh, but you can always play them still, right? They're still yours to enjoy. I get the vaccine tomorrow. Hope that isn't a controversial thing to share. No, I don't think so. Cool. Do you have to pay for it? Is that free? Is the vaccine controversial? I hope not. Are we an anti-vaxxer crowd here? What platform have I built it? We're losing Kumainu? Yeah, you are, unfortunately. Uh, you have a Saisenton if you want a similar vibe. But yeah, there's always like this lament where you go through the lists of cards that are gonna go. Now, for what it's worth, you might not lose everything. Like, there's a chance that some of the cards will reappear in whatever the system base 2021 is, just like they did for the last rotation. So maybe they save Komainu and it's in the new system gateway, system core set, whatever, 2021. But maybe not, because I think Saisenton is close enough. The outfit. Okay, so the outfit, generally what that tells us is they could be on Punitive. They could be on, they're generally on CityWorks Project. Oh, cheers. Uh, but also they have some bigger ice, so we have to watch out for that Tithonium, we have to watch out for the seven strength sentry, the seven cost sentry, the uh, trebuchet, AU2. Um, opening hand, we have a paperclip which is pretty good, because if we get them in the bin we can face check. The early I've had worse is fantastic when we, if we have to run into a city works project, which does meat damage, and then lets us draw up so we don't get punitive. Gamble, Rizeki is fine, Ice Carver is the worst card in our hand, um, but we can definitely keep this. An early Angola would be six, so we don't have to like special order for it. Uh, yeah, yep. That's true, we do have Salvage Memories cards. You're a volunteer EMT. Oh, sick. Had to work this morning because Prod was broken, otherwise on break until next year. Can't complain. Hey, cheers, Dispers. I'm glad to hear EMTs are getting the vaccine. Yeah, I think they need to, huh? I think it's only controversial because people are cutting in line. EMT, oh really? That's like the conversation is people will be like, who should prioritize getting this thing? Okay, this card on its own, unadvanced, what are we looking at? Uh, probably uh, uh, Rashida. Did they mull? No, they kept, okay. So we're just gonna try and set up. I think we have to hit the iPad worst just to get through our deck, cause, or no, we can probably just hit Shiko at this point. They do have a credit lead, and they have a big chance of drawing into like a hard hitting news or something, punishing here. Oh, that's too much. If we do interact with them, but I feel like we're going to have to take that risk. A lot of times they're not in economic warfare, they're on something else. So we'll run HQ for a single. This will get our uh, Hoshiko online. Give us two credits and a link. Dedication ceremony, okay. So that could be the sort of like damage um, contract killer lists. It could also mean reversed accounts, which is disastrous for us if they're gonna hard hitting news us. We just lose to that. So we'd wanna keep money offshore on liberated accounts. I don't know if they're on like Rococo. Oh, that's good at least if we panic, we can just install that. Yo, Paul, what up? Hey, Andre, good to see you live. Hope you have a good Christmas. Yeah, cheers. And everyone else you said, yeah, uh, it was really nice. Thank you. How was yours? You do the Christmas thing. Okay, they have a lot of money. And this state here, so we know the one card in hand. We got a gacha pawn down. That's pretty good. I think we just pop it right away. We know the card here. I think we just need to set up and get our economy up because they have a that, whatever that is. This actually could be an agenda. Oh, there's a chance that they just have the dedication, right, for City Works project. 
whatever we'll pop this dream net hunting grounds i've had worse rizeki special order oh uh, this is actually interesting hunting grounds doesn't matter so it's the rizeki or the dream net and the dream net's actually really good for damage decks and it's also economy the rizeki is just economy i think we'll do the dream net though three cards back into so hippo's good i've had worse is good rizeki special these are all really good hippo's really powerful when they like have very expensive ice uh, I don't think we need the Hunting Grounds. I've had worse is really important. Rizeki Special Order. Ah, fuck. So I'm going to put back Rizeki. So I have to choose two of the worst cards. I don't want to choose Special Order because we need it for our list. Because we don't have that many breakers. And then out of these, I think I've had worse is probably the most important. We can lose a Hippo. It was good as well despite lockdown and everything. Hey, good. Good to hear. It won't let me click on things. I'm trying. It's not the mouse. So we're going to know what this card is, but we'll get a credit and a card. Yo, Terrence, what up? Ice Destruction seems less important in this matchup. I like the idea of Ice Destruction, but I, I know what you mean. We want to draw one so we can discard this thing into the bin. Uh, but I think getting the Paladin Poimo down is probably a bit more important. For our economy. I actually ran a patient who was most likely COVID positive on Monday night, took all proper precautions and everything, but it'll be more peace of mind after getting the vaccine. Stay safe, Julys. Oh fuck, three advancements. So what could that be? Like maybe government takeover, but I think realistically a lot of the times that's uh just a slow SDS drone deployment. It also could just be like a killer reversed accounts. So if we want to run into a trebuchet, how bad is it for us? We lose one of these cards. Uh, I think we're just going to continue set up. Spooky a bit. There's a dedication ceremony. Okay, uh, we could install the ice carver for two. It's not going to help us right now. Like it's just a, a not a tempo positive play right now. We could put down the hippo for one, and it's not something we exactly need. Eh. We probably should just be drawing through a deck a bit more, because we're not going to need this until we get the proper breakers, or at least the Angolo. The issue is like we can't like slap down the medium or anything here, because if they score an SDS, we'll just lose it. Now we're going to lose a Rizeki. The fuck is this? <laughs> What's a BLM card? That's not part of the game. Yeah, Spaghetti, what's up? This is a, it's a Black Lives Matter tournament. Oh, fuck, Alice with three counters. It was a alt art for I've Had Worse. That was part of a Black Lives Matter uh, tournament that Nisei ran. Okay, that's a huge issue, right? Because now any sort of combo pieces, we know they have a dedication in hand, so they can, if they have it, they can pull reversed accounts into what, into what. So the fact that like this list has fewer breakers right now has kind of goofed us. That being said, we could have drawn more aggressively. Uh, so I think we just have to risk running R&D here. Wait, Tithonium is... No, we can deal with Tithonium. I don't know. Secret New Year's Eve stream. Jankfus, how's it going? What breakers are you running? We have an N'Golo, an Adore, two paperclip, I think a single black orchestra. But N'Golo is the big thing. We have two special orders to find it. But this is obviously horrible for us. Not only does this kind of guarantee that they have another two points scored, because they have like... They can do so much with this. Like, they can pull a Dasting to Atlas. Easy. They can pull, um, uh, like, excuse me, a CityWorks project into Dedication, Dedication. There's just literally so much they can do. Hedge Fund. Okay, at least we can Special Order for N'Golo. Our money's okay. We've already got our access. A Dirty Laundry HQ. Gatekeeper, that's a surprise. That's two influence. Didn't expect that. So we throw out this paperclip a week to arc lockdown, and when they have a Project Alice token, I think we might not want to do that. I'll keep one in hand just in case. We do have N'Golo for backup, but throwing out two paperclips and then like pulling a token to arc lockdown. Rose in time, could be punitive? Yeah, I'm not worried about punitive too much because of the credit differential, but yeah, punitive is something we definitely expect. But if they're on Alice, they might not be on three-pointers. I don't know. Generally, if they do uh, like three pointers, they're on like two hostels and six three pointers, but it might not be the sort of like 
agenda suite, we're thinking, okay, we have this, which means we can hit into Trebuchet, but that means we also want to get down Ice Carver. What's this? What's the strength of Trebuchet? Five. It's six. So this thing does one, two, three, four, five. So uh, this actually pays for itself. As much as the click doesn't, eventually it will. Because now it's five strength, so we break it for two. Oh yeah, of course, we knew about that. That's actually really bad for us. Oh, we probably should have just special order for, for N'Golo. Yeah, we definitely should have special order for N'Golo. But this is really bad when they have no cards in hand. Yikes. This looks like an outfit fast events. It kind of does. I think we might not be fast events. I don't know if they have punishment. The dedication, though, could be Rococo. Like, this could be Rococo into Atlas. And then we're really in a bad spot. At that point, we just slam medium and go. But yeah, this does look faster than, than normal. Because that's really weird ice for anything that's, like, punitive-based. May well, maybe not. But, like, this is really good for fast events. Yeah, there's a hostile. We'll take that. No one home can help us if we get it down, but I don't know how much we have to be worried. Our economy is pretty okay at this point. I just three Atlas tokens. What does BLM and Mask have to do with Never and Universe seems out of place? Uh, what's Mask? I think Black Lives Matter and uh, I've had work, and yeah, excuse me. Black Lives Matter and I've had worse kind of work together. Okay, so this is what we're talking about. This is six, seven, eight damage. So we can draw two and run it, but we don't have a breaker. I think we just put on the medium pressure. I think we just medium them. No one home? It's only net damage and tags. It doesn't do the meat damage. Citadel, though, sometimes works. This is meat damage. Now, the issue is they can score this and then just score the hostile out. No, that doesn't work. Yeah, we have to put the pressure on. I think we have to do this. Audacity Alice wins? Oh, yeah, Audacity Alice wins. I think we, we, we have to get this, don't we? <sighs> what do we do? Okay, so the gatekeeper's an issue. We don't have boomerang. We'd have to get down either this card, which is one click. That'd put us on five. Now, of course, we draw one with a successful run. We have all our breakers, so I think we need to install this, draw a jar, run that remote. I don't think we have another option. The problem is like we'll probably lose the tr to double punitive if they have it. No one home doesn't care about the punitive. Oh, board control is true. Go ham and R&D like Rosenhub. I think it's a, f it's a fine strat. It's where I was thinking first, but it's totally right. Like they score this out of hand and they audacity Atlas when we lose. Like we have to contest this. I think we have to throw the game. Okay, so we need six, seven, eight cards in hand. Wait, that's not possible, is it? Hope for no border control. If they have border control, they win, which makes this a, actually a pretty low odds play. With response to the barrier of entry, I hope to finish MTGA like client side project at the end of 2022. For what, for Netrunner? Do we hippo this? No, I don't think so. They have bigger ice than that. Border control, they win. Okay, we need to draw into another I've had worse there, and we didn't. If we drew into a second I've had worse, we'd be safe, but we're probably dead here. How do they have so much money? Uh, bad publicity, largely. I think that's, yeah, it's just these three econ cards and then Rashida. Our clock down. So there we lost both of our paper clips. So, hey, that's something we actually played around, and it was correct. It looks like we're not dead yet, and we still have an Angola in the deck. Oh, yeah, Dreamnet. Dreamnet is what we needed. Otherwise, we couldn't have gotten there. This card's really good against damage. <laughs> Another City Works. Do they have the third dedicated? They can pull it from their deck. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, well, at least they have less counters. Oh, my God, we're so good. So how much damage is this? 
This is two, three, four, five. So we just run it again. Oh man. And we win. Wait, we win. Why are they doing this? Oh, because of paperclip. Hold on. It's because there's a barrier there. Of course. Of course, of course, of course, of course. So we need a top deck into N'Golo or special order? Does your shirt say dead by daily? Yeah, it does in Japanese, Chris. How's it going? BLM card, some bullshit card, not legal. What are you talking about? It's an alt art. Okay, so we're going to have had worse here for sure. Oh, do we rebirth into Quetzal? I think we rebirth into Quetzal. There's only one end of the run on, on Tithonium. Spiderweb will goof us up really bad. Quetzal Rebirth like plays around border control, but they could have border control this last turn, so I don't know if it's border control. Ah, uh, piss. Right, like Quetzal to Rebirth gets us through a single end of run, which Tithonium has a single end of run. The issue is if it's not, we could draw once. If it's not border go, we could draw one more and Sol and Golo go. But if it was border control, they should have res the last turn. I don't get it. Maybe they not necessarily. We'll play around border control. <laughs> I hope it's only one ender in subroutine. Sandstorm! Yes! Oh, we did it! Fucking hyped. Oh man, hype! Good game. Oh man, the deck, the deck <laughs> really helped us out there. Was was worried about spiderweb versus uh, border control. Thanks to the channel. No, cheers. No, thank you. Thanks for the game. Oh, that was awesome. That was really cool. So like the other card that we were drawing for is that we had no more, we had no more fractors, right? So the only thing we had was an Angolo, which was at the bottom of our deck. So we need to draw a special order for it, which was coming up, but a couple clicks away. But yeah, we prioritized card draw. The hippo wasn't worth it. The for what it's worth, the ice carver wasn't worth it. But this was a faster deck. And like maybe when we saw Gatekeeper, we should have figured it out that we this would be more rushy. Oh man, that's cool. Good game. Good game, San. Cool. Let's do another one. Man, that I've a three token Alice just installed to six, consider popping it. That's really cool. I want to see what we do when we get N'Golo out because I imagine it's still really good. Clutch Rebirth. Yo, Rebirth will get you out there. Um just like a, a flame thread going on in Twitch chat. I don't know how to how to react with this. Oh one second. Oh, we're gonna do a runner game. Yo, Cephalopod, new, hey Andre, new morning stream schedule? Uh, not so much, it's just the holidays and we can't stream tomorrow and we didn't stream last week uh, cause of Christmas. So we're gonna stream today at least, just to get it in there. But there's no like really strict scheduling. I'm on holiday, so it's kind of just like whenever it makes sense. <laughs> we're just lucky that we have a minimum of these chuckleheads. Yeah, I think it looks like someone's really uh hung up about the BLM uh, inclusion on an altered card. Um, something to do with FFG losing their license. I, I don't understand it. Uh, they raised a lot of money for uh, Black Lives Matter based charities, and that tournament was a huge success. I'm I'm pretty excited. Nisa actually sent me even those uh, those cards too, which is a huge uh, support. So, yeah, no, uh, that's a uh, definitely a pillar of this community. This sort of inclusivity. So, um, I, I everyone's kind of on board with that. One of the better parts of the game community. Yeah, community here is really great. Seder Laboratories, ooh, someone's got a Mason Bellamy us. So this is a recursion card, puts cards on top of R&D, which is also a multi-access uh, defense. So we have to play around like border control. We have to play around Mason Bellamy. Maybe they do asset spam and play like Ronald five. Our opening hand liberated is like kind of slow. I like drip economy. Thanks, you too. I wish I'd played in that tournament. The cards are dope. They're really good. Interestingly enough, like this used to be the world's Arter Liberated account, and they rotated that back, but the BLM I've had worse is gonna be here to stay for a while, I might I reckon. Um
Yeah, I'll mulligan this. I feel like the deck is only good cards. Yeah, there you go. Rizeki, good to go. And I bought the mat. It's so dope. It's a good mat. Wonder what format will be common in meat space once we're allowed to play in person again. Uh, standard? I'm assuming standard. I don't know. In terms of like other never- Ah, oh, fuck. It's round of five assets, man. At least we're not the worst against assets, man. Okay, so we want to get a Rizeki down. If we play a card here, we'll be under Mumbed Virtual Tour if that's something to worry about. And we just want to check one of these anyways, just to make sure that we get our Hoshiko value. We want to dream that as soon as possible. Pad campaign, that's fine. So late on a lot of those cards? Which ones exactly? We want to hit a Rashida here, if anything. I don't think there's any traps. I don't think I have to be worried about Tempest. Mumba Temple? Uh, yeah, we'll, I guess we'll trash that. And then we'll click for credit. I donated paid later, but nothing arrived so far. Yo, Dunch, um, yeah. Ooh, double pad. That's going to be a lot of their money. We need to take that down. In theory, they should have res the Mumba Temple to free res the pad campaign. They would have gained a credit from that. I think that's a, a misplay. Uh, I know things like world's prizes haven't been fully sent out yet or sent out. Uh, it's going to be really slow with both, um, you know, the post and everything. So, uh, just hold on a bit. I'm aware. Yo, Link Ping, what up? Welcome. I don't have all the expansions. There's quite a few of them. Maryland campaign. Honestly, trashing this right now. I think the idea is that they don't care too much because they have recursion. I guess we'll trash this right now. Otherwise, what are we doing? We're clicking for three and playing liberated accounts. Nah, they can, that's fine. We need to set up a bit more. Just keep our money up. We take their pads down, they might not have money. Proxies are legal. Yeah, Terrence, that's a really big point. Uh, in tournament play, in person play, uh, you can proxy anything. You don't need, you don't need cards. It's a lot of campaigns. That's not going to get any easy for us. And we just don't have the clicks for the liberated account. There's the round of five. Okay, so as long as we run last click, we, they don't get recursion. So that's kind of the, the play around for round of five, which is fine because it gives us a click to do this, gives us a click to do this, and then we can just bring down round of five. So they paid three credits for nothing. Well, not really. They wasted a click of ours. But Ronald 5 doesn't let us lose a click if we don't have a click, so I don't know. This does control the board, but it's also a trap of some sort. And we need to keep their money down, because I don't know what their win con is. I have no idea what their win condition is. They're just going to Biotic out or maybe Lakshmi Smart Fabrics. Also, like this is a really good matchup to just have Medium to be like, fuck it, I'm going in on Medium. So hopefully we can get to that. Seriously, why did no one tell me Ronald 5 was a playable card now? It's like, I think this is the first time I've ever seen it on a table, but abstractly it does a thing. Turning wheel is okay. And they probably have agendas in HQ too, so I want to control the board though first before we do anything else. And they didn't res either of these. We might see another Ronald 5. He is unique. I just don't know what this stuff is. But it's not a win condition. An Adonis campaign? The fuck? Depends where I play. New Zealand has IRL play this year. Oh, that's true. Oh, we need to take this down. That's way too big of a target. And there's the Cybernex Court. Okay, so if we just keep our money up, like the best card we could draw into is another Rizeki. But like we take down the, the Donis. I think, well, we need money. I wish we had another Econ here. Just a Puemo would be so good. I don't want to put down the turning wheel because if we do, we're actually pretty far away from uh, from installing another liberated preemptive. Surprising. And there's a food. Okay. So we'll throw out the breaker. Hopefully, we draw into some uh, something that gives us economy and board presence. Like, oh well, Rizeki's good. Dreamnet would be the best. Uh, Dirty laundry would be really good. Uh, Puemo would be good too. Like anything that gives us economy while letting us control the board. And you see, so much of the money is tied up to these pad campaigns. We need to bring these down. Legibility proxying the mind with never in a draft cards is the real meta. Oh, and people have to read this card. Okay, I think we are actually going to Ive Edwards to draw into. Yeah, we needed something. All right. 
I wish we had an imp or a sweet even stim hack this. Bioethics. Okay, well now they have a win condition. I guess. How much influence is that? It's like two? This is just a straight prison deck. Oh, we do have a stim hack. Probably stim hack the cyber next court. Actually, it doesn't do anything right now. Oh, they have recursion. I don't know if we want to trash their ice. Maybe we should keep one, though. Stimhack the court? Yeah, parallel. That seems good. It's just they don't have a lot of cards. Like, I'd rather Stimhack Jeeves because it's actually going to do something. All these campaigns miss me. Make me miss the Spark deck. Oh, what's it we rebirth into? We don't have enough viruses to rebirth into. Uh, no, Hoshiko's definitely the best thing we can be right now. But, like, in theory, freedom, but I don't know. So, if we lose a click, they recur. So, basically, we get a click to set up. Just run HQ. I don't actually want to stim hack, maybe, because uh, they're trying to kill us. There's another Cyber Next Court. So, it's either 10 or 11. I think we have to just take down these. These do have an effect on the game. Albeit, I don't think it's the strongest effect. Gatchapon's pretty good. I don't think we need the rebirth. Nah. Hey, Spaghetti, you're using some words that I'm really unhappy with. I'm going to just silence you for a bit, okay? And you can maybe reconsider it. I don't really have to do a lot of moderation here, unfortunately, but uh, that is like straight up a slur. Like, that's not language we want around here. If you want to. Think about what you said. Woo, fuck. Okay, that's why you don't leave the Jeeves around. Okay, so that's an issue. Um, so the, the Ronalds are slowing us down enough that we're not checking things. Um, thanks, Audrey. Yeah, no, no problem. I'm not going to stand for that. That's, that's fucking offensive. Um... Like, okay, that's the thing is like when people have, you know, takes that I don't agree with, like I'm okay humoring the take to some extent. <laughs> What's all about? Oh, fuck. Like I'm okay humoring it. Like I'd rather have a discussion over it that's civil, but like, yeah, there's no civil way to use a slur. So fuck off a bit. I don't know. Now that's good. I think we do have to stim hack the Jeeves. Like, how many? How are they going to kill us? Like, how many hostile bioethics do they have to hit us with? And we do have an Ivid Warriors. I think we do have to stim hack a Jeeves. Hey, Brian. Fucking shit. Okay. Just take Jeeves down. Okay, maybe we want to get a Gatchapon down so we could use some of that Jeeves money to set up. Most of our stuff isn't that expensive. Okay, and we know 17 is a court, so we're doing pretty good. Unfortunately, we lost the Turning Wheel, which is like our good pressure card here. We do still have a Medium coming up, and we're drawing so much. Like, we just need a Dream Net. A Dream Net would be so good. Click Tax, Bioethics, and HP. This list's better than Jank I built two months ago. So now we don't have to control the board. I think we just slam Centrals. Let's Gatchapon for a Medium first. Yeah, there we go. Hopefully that's better than Dreamnet. Three cards to shuffle back. Uh, Dreamnet for sure. Dirty Laundry for sure. Oh, Dore. I don't know if they have any ice. Trick Shotaka we don't need. Uh, we'll shuffle back a Paladin. Oh, wait, that means we have to re remove the Dore? No, they could be on Tour Guide. Let's start over. Dreamnet, Adore, Dirty Laundry. Done. How dare you put social issues in my cyberpunk as a wild take. All right, let's try and close the game out. They actually could be on CVS, but I think if they're on uh, this 4-2, they might not be on a different 4-2. Commercial Bankers Group? Yeah, we'll trash that just to see deeper. Ronald 5 coming up, Maryland campaign coming up. And now they have to purge or get ice, and I don't know if they have ice. Ronald 5, Maryland, Violet level clearance. Yeah, we'll trash that. And we know this is a Cyber Next Court, so they could Biotic from hand if they wanted to. Man, I never get to catch an Andre stream anymore. Lucky me. Yo. Hey, Brightsides. How's your holidays? I hope we have all holidays at this point. So that could be a Ronald. That could be a Ronald. That could be a Ronald. Okay. So what do they do? Do they draw? No, they installed three. 
So we can check some of this stuff. We know Ronald's is around. Ronald is three credits. Uh, uh, does Jane and Order the start of turn stuff correctly? I think so. I'm going to check some of these. They'll probably res a Ronald, which means that we have to check one fewer. Oh, well, we can't even trash this. I don't think they needed to res that. But like, we might as well just check everything. We can trash bioethics. Yeah, there you go. Good game. I don't know where their win con was. But like, if you just focus the board, any ice? Maybe it's bioethics, but that's like, I don't know. I uh, I was assuming that we'd see a Lakshmi or an MC Austerity or something, but uh, ooh. They have three Eli 1.0. Cool, cool, cool. It didn't just happen to pan out. Oh, wait, it didn't miss it. Sads, what's up? Oh, yeah, Eli makes a lot of sense because you click through it. I thought they'd be on Gatekeep or something like that, but that's cool. I heard the word Ronald in the past five minutes more than I have all year. Yeah, there's always like tournament lists, pseudo tournament lists uh, of like Ronald 5 Seder asset spam decks. And like, I don't know, at least for me, the way that I see asset spam, it's the same issue I have with like replicating perfection decks. Is like if you don't have a win con when you're losing the board, you're probably not great. Like I feel like the asset lists can still do stuff if they don't have a good board state, which makes them really good. I feel like CTM lists can still capitalize on mistakes. Uh, and sort of lists like this would be like, if I don't stick to the board, I got nothing, uh, really don't excite me. Um, they didn't, did they didn't fire Rashida, did they? No, they didn't. But yeah, if you just play like three Rizekis and just run centrals and r run all these servers, like there's no retort from them. So you can just kind of pull it down. Time for Rizeki plus Hushiko. That's what I was wondering. Oh, you're right. Cause if you have zero credits, you should do the, the Hushiko first. You, it's weird. You're right. It, it didn't ask. That's actually a good point. A default lets you lose one at zero credits in game two. Okay, if it defaults that way, I don't think there's any reason why you wouldn't want to default that way unless you're like playing. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I guess to some extent, Super Corridor? Yo, Papadopoulos, how's it going? Andre's streaming when I'm not asleep. Yo, how's your holidays, man? That's a rare Super Corridor, Hoshigo would care. Order of Soul, that's a good one. But Order of Soul would already trigger because you're at zero credits that turn, so technically no. But kind of, right? Okay, let's do one more with this deck. This deck is pretty cool. And like you're seeing the power of Medium. Medium can just close games in a way that nothing else can. Well, Turning Wheel sort of, but not really. Oh, GameNet. Okay, so GameNet, I don't know if they got anything. Oh, no, that's not true. GameNet got Sweep Sweep. GameNet got Sand Sand. That's pretty good. Also, for what it's worth, I think GameNet got... Uh... GameNet is kind of like Architects of Tomorrow, where they really want to give you an incentive to run because their ability only triggers when you run largely. Uh, no, entirely. So uh, I think subliminal messaging is kind of nice in GameNet. I don't know how much money you'll get and whether it's actually like a good draw in the mid game. I kind of doubt it. I, I feel like it's not that impactful of a, of a card. Maybe it gets you three credits. Yay. But at least it incentivizes you to run. So in this matchup, what do we want? We want to destroy ice. So we have that hippo. We want to make sure we have a strong economy. Uh, and we want to, yeah, this is probably good enough hand. Liberate's a bit short, slow, but I think we can do worse than this. I love an early Rizeki, but hopefully we can just like gatch upon into it. You're still as good as I remember, Andre. Oh, I'm, I'm as lucky as always. No, but thank you. Stick is showing off in there for some reverse medium digs. That's still legal. It is. I think it is. I think it's an honor and profit. Not honor and profit, order and chaos. Showing off lets you access the bottom. Ooh. Ooh. Last click add to you, Jeffman. Shoveling Project Beal into HQ into R&D to get one. So that's... Okay, in terms of a play, that is wild. Like, you definitely want to do that first click because now they could have just got drawn another agenda to that. Well, technically, no, because you do a last click, but there's no reason to do that for first click. What could this be? This looks like probably like IP block into a Rashida. Uh, it doesn't look like it's obviously a resed um, daily quest. At this point, Sand Sand isn't scary, so I think we can just set up. I also think we want to go in for an access, and I think they shuffled Moch out of HQ. We could go HQ for info. We can just go R&D for R&D sake. Showed me a lot of things a few years ago. Oh, nice. That's a Rashida. 
If we take that down, like, we're weak to hard-hitting news. But I feel like the hard-hitting news is here. They're going to struggle to close the game off before we can clear the tags. And we get the link and this. So that's a Rashida. So it's good for them. <laughs> Do you think Damon ever tested an HB acid that drained to click each turn like bioethics? That sounds especially hellish. Did he just run the last click though, right? Okay, they have a, probably a shit ton of ice, so this hippo should do something. At least we got a good run in while we could. Yo, DJ Nan RD and RD, welcome. Thanks for the raid. Power level medium makes the game in general feel a bit too samey. Basically, always going to win via medium. I, I do feel that. I, I do not like the homogeneity in win conditions that medium had on the meta back in the day, and I feel like we're going to get closer to that. All right, we just want to set up. Dreamnet's okay. We can Dreamnet run archives. It's cute. I feel like we might want to go for an early Gachapon. I just don't know what we're going for, but I kind of want to get a Black Orchestra into the bin. So we'll draw once, see how it goes. Should have drawn before taking the money off of this for sure if I planned my turn. And then we dropped a Liberated Account. So this is going to be a money, money fight? Yeah, probably. I don't know, there's a chance that they go with the Beal, right? Like, the Beal doesn't show too much, but there's a chance they just go more into the, into the San San route. Okay, so we're looking at Bologna NGO front. Could be Big Beal. If they score Big Beal, it's fine. Their economy is gutted. If they score Bologna, it's a bit less fine for us. We have access to one breaker, and I think we can just face check here. They can't risk Hydra. Uh, IP block will be something. I think we can just run this, force them to spend money. But they could actually, no, they could pop an NGO into a Hydra. At least we have an iPad worse, but we might lose, like, Hippos. This is big bro, yeah, this is the deck list. It's a surveyor, that's fine, we have link, right? No, we, didn't we access? Oh no, we didn't last turn, oh, beans. Oh, we don't want two tags, this will give him a credit. So the question is, do we trace through this? Uh, do we trace through this? They'll leave them with two credits, which means they can res IP block. They can't score out of anything else here. We can let them have this. They rotate back out when gateway release. Yeah, 100%. Okay. All right, let's go get an access. No pop-up window, please. Oh, okay, well. Anger flash. No. This is where you play Ice Carver. This card's so good. Everybody should play this. Event? Okay, we lose I've had worse. That's it. That's fine. We defuse the remote. They also know our whole hand. I'm scared now. I'm scared. They're building a prison and I don't want to be in prison. Please, I've done nothing wrong. I've done nothing wrong. This is not fair. <laughs> I'm just trying to have fun out here. How? Ah, piss. Another attitude adjustment. So this heavy attitude adjustment looks like they're really trying to set up a prison here. There's a chance that there's that like that whatever. I'm going to say Michael Phelps. I know that's not right. That will like trace one, get a credit off every subroutine shitter upgrade. I'm sure Arya Bar rotated not for a while. I think it's in like Red Sands or something. No, it's in Mumba. Oh boy. Okay, we have to do more. We got to pressure R and D because like uh, the Surveyor remote's gonna fall out of reach. We don't have. We do have Angola, which deals the Surveyor, but we don't have Boomerang. Well, that's good. That's what we want. Okay. Let's just do enough. Getting this paperclip in the bin is good too. Is this your first time with this jank? It's amazing jank. You'll love it. I probably won't. Ooh, second Rashida. Third Rashida, even. How's it going, Dijin? Dreamnet run archives, take lib? Yeah, I think we need to get the Dreamnet net down pretty soon. I think you're right about that. I think I prioritized this to hopefully get a, like a, a Puemu or even just another Rizeki. But Dreamnet archives is definitely pretty good, especially the link is going to matter in this matchup a fair bit. So ensuring that we're flipped as much as possible is, is definitely very potent. Install card in server one. Still don't know how they score out, but they easily could have a Sansan just like chilling underneath here. 
Ice Carver looks good. Ice Carver does look really good too against Engram. Even against this like little surveyor, it's, it it does work. Oh shit, we're uh we're in unknown territories. But why? What? I guess you need to res it, otherwise you have to throw it out. Uh oh, okay. We're in uncharted territories, my friends. Gotcha upon hunting grounds. Hunting grounds actually works with Engram. I've been wearing special order turning wheel. I'll take the hunting grounds. They might be on Data Raven. So I know this deck will be an awesome ride. Uh oh. Oh, uh, that's not. We'll redo this. So we need the special orders on the list because we only have one Ingolo and no way to tutor it. I like the sure gamble. I like the turning wheel. So unfortunately, we're throwing a card draw, which is bad. Hold on, full jank incoming. John, what up? Uncharted territories are where magical girls tend to shine. Hey, how was your holidays, John? We'll go in for the flip. The res sounds like it's an NGO. Well, I think you need to res it otherwise. Otherwise, you'd have to trash it regardless of what it is. Oh, I don't know. It was good. John says good. Good yours. Mine was nice too. 4 2. That's a free res one? What is this? Sandbox. Okay. That makes sense. Macrophage works with Aryabata. All that stuff lines up. This could just be a CVS after all, which now makes us a lot stronger. We did get the Puemo. Oh, we should be running HQ. Why do we run archives? Oh, we, we goofed it up. Hopefully, I'm not modified deck of JTFQ and I'm 100% wrong. Okay. Yeah, Lumilla, hang on. It's a moment. It's not Thursday. How's your holidays? So this we can prevent the on a thing. We should ran here instead of running archives. They can know a better hand, it doesn't matter. So here if you prevent the on encounter, they can't trash cards. It just reveals a grip. If you can tell, tell JFTQ I say hello. Okay. Get us a sweeter gender. It's a turnpike. Another on encounter. Okay. Well, we can just build up our economy, I'm pretty sure. And trashing this will be really valuable. We don't have the breaker yet to do it. So the Scatchapon will help, the Puemo will help, and then we're okay. They're not threatening that much. My holidays have been okay, very chill. My girlfriend came over, my mom made ham. We just like hung out and watched TV. We watched the McElroy Brothers Candlelight Spectacular, which I enjoyed immensely. They filmed that stuff? I don't think I've ever seen a candlelight show. I'm doing well otherwise. It's been very pleasant. It's been me and Maddie here. We did some Zoom calls with her family, with my family. We played some Jackbox games. Uh, my brother and my brother-in-law and a friend did some Factorio, which is a good time. I played a bunch of video games. What did I play so far? What did, what did we beat? This holiday we beat Immortals Phoenix Rising, which slaps. We played uh, Streets of Rage 4, which is really good. Played Sayonara Wild, Wild, Sayonara Wild Hearts, which is really good. And then I beat Dusk last night, which also is really good. It's been good. It's still up to buy a ticket until the 5th. Oh. Oh, cool. Factorio is so good to talk. Yeah, it, it's really a problem. I've got to this point where, like, I don't know the next step. Like, we're working with liquids and petroleum and stuff, and, like, I don't know what to do. So I'm waiting for everyone to come back together. Yeah, I highly recommend, if you haven't played Sayonara Wild, Wild Hearts, play it. It's on mobile. It's kind of incredible. And also, uh, Dusk is one of the scariest games I've ever played. It is so good. Holidays with, like, with, holidays with kids and wild kids is quite different, but just as magical. Oh, I should have waited. We would have got a counter on here. Beans. No one home actually kind of matters. I just like the Rizeki money, though. At least that's the reason to do that earlier. So shuffle back. I like the dirty laundries more. We'll do one of each. We'll just thin our deck. Okay, we still just don't have a breaker in sight. Just still not a breaker in sight. Okay, and they drew last click. Okay, okay. Let's go get a card draw. So this means we're going to use our on encounter. Hold on. Whoops.
We just cannot contest this remote yet. To do that on approach. Oil is the least fun part of it. You always need more than you think. Turns out cracking stuff down into light oil and gas is really useful though. Yeah, I just don't understand any of those systems. Because I, I, the single player tutorial, did they change the single player tutorial for that game? Because I remember I landed my ship and then it like systemically kept adding stuff and like being like, this is your next goal. And then I did the tutorial again and it was like discrete levels and I did not like it as much. You don't need a break remote, just find medium. That's also a very fair point. Shit. Okay, that's gonna help us at least. Probably should keep one paper clip. I don't know if they're gonna lock down us, but uh, it's, I don't know. We don't need a second dream net. What's your MU in this deck? Uh, we got Keiko for MU, but otherwise we're on N'Golo, Paperclip, Adore, and uh, Black Orchestra. We also have an MK Ultra, I think. Yeah, this is not good. But where's their money? Are they gonna res like a daily quest in here? Daily quests? Uh, man, you can do daily quest with uh, Chrysium, huh? That'd be fun. I don't know what this is, but we got to make sure that we're in a scenario where we don't let traces fire. But I think, yeah, medium is probably how we win this. Oh, that'll help. That's another trace. Eh. That's another uh, Engram flush. Okay, well, let's just start going. Because they've been burring agendas, I think. I don't know. I'm gonna wait for them to res because we can hunting grands. Okay, we'll hunting grands this. So we lose three credits. That's cheaper than breaking it. Your traces don't trigger game net. That's true, but are you bought it right? I guess if we have to lose it. Bologna, we'll take it. Oh man, rebirth. Uh, I still think our ability is really good here. But well, they did gain a game net credit. I think we just installed the hippo next turn. I'll just take some money. Yeah. We can install the the We can install this next turn, take this apart, crush this. Break so game net doesn't fire? Oh, that's a good point actually. I forgot I would fire on that. Oh, so they should have got two credits. They just purged. Okay, well, the medium is looking a bit worse now. Well, we have to break all of it. Hold on. Oh, fuck. Yeah, we will break all of it. That's not that bad. Oh, man, if we just had a medium. Uh, we're not going to hunting grounds this. Get medium, then reborth. Yeah, we will. Medium reborth is really strong. And we're drawing turning wheel. I've had worse stim hack. Okay, so turning wheel is. Am I clicking on these? No. Sandbox. Good. We drew the turning wheel. So they are in a world of pain. We're not going to see what the cool combo deck does. This is bad. <laughs> Yeah, this is not good for you. And we can install this, we go down to nine. Eh, that's probably good. Or ten, right? Yeah, so if they don't ice this up, we just install turning wheel and go in. And if they ice it up, like a single ice we hippo through no matter what it is. And Golo Hippo is incredibly strong. I'm not noticed how good that is. Okay, well they figured our weakness out. But like if one of those is a surveyor, it's bad. If it's a turnpike, it's not good. Actually, no, the trace. Oh, okay, no, they, they, we, we're, we're Borthen. Do we reborth? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we'll rebirth. We got Drakkar draw. We're going to lose a link, which is a bummer. So we're Omar, and we'll Omar. We might have actually wanted them to res the ice because they can't afford to. So uh, RD, I guess. It's a turnpike. Okay. 
We probably should have ran once here just to force them to res. I think we still should. Mm. 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 Yeah. Okay, well, this is the stuff we needed. So we don't want this. There's a big chance we don't need the no one home. It helps with surveyor trace. But everything else here, here is really good. Ice Carver does so much work in this matchup. Stimac is just good. Yeah, I, I think we'll throw that out. We'll just have good. How many medium in this deck? Just one. Just a single medium. Which we can tutor with only Gatchapon. Oh, they're drawing. Oh, they're looking for that R&D defense. I think against Anarch, you always have to ice up archives at least once. Even against like what used to be Hoshiko, there's a good reason to do that. But like, yeah, triple icing R&D when, when archives is open feels bad, man. Third ice on R&D? What? Oh, that's a misclick. Yeah, that's going to go in archives. There you go. So we just install a hippo. I don't understand why you run turning wheel instead of second medium. Because uh, it does HQ pressure, but uh, I hear you. The problem with medium is like against the meta, I, th I assume there'd be a lot of Cyberdex Sandbox, so I kind of understand it, but also the guy, I get you. Like, I don't think you're wrong. We'll take one of these. A little Omar. Oh, there's a thing here. It's probably a CVS, but I don't think we access it. If it's a Chrysium, it's a bit more annoying. But then they have to res it. I in theory shouldn't hit this because if it's an on encounter, we can we can goof with it. Uh shit. I guess so. How expensive is this? It's a bit expensive, but we'll trash it. So I'll use this. Oh, I'll I'll So I'll hunting grounds that so we have one more dollar. So that's still pretty expensive at five. But it's gone now. So this is a CVS, we don't hit it. I'll tunnel RD. It's a surveyor. Okay. It's not very good there. So we can't dirty laundry in here. Just take money. Let's not forget the power of two or three mediums installed at once. That's a good point. Oh, it's a ginger! Oh, we actually need to destroy that! This, they can't res any of this ice. I don't think it matters, but we'll dirty laundry that. At a high mind, so you got a brew. Oh, they purged. Oh, that's good. So that's a surveyor. Luckily, we can just trace through that. For, no, we don't want to trace through. We actually want to break that. So we'll get them Keiko first. We break this for three, plus the install, so five. And then once we trash this, we'll just Omar through it. I don't think we have another hippo. No, we do have one more hippo. Okay, that's all their money. So now we can just run R&D anyways, unless they have pop-ups, but we can always pay pop-up. Uh, so what is this? If we want to break this, it's two, Three, four. Yeah, that's actually cheaper. Okay. This is the jank though. Okay, I'll open that up after. Now we can get two runs on here. Yeah, their economy just isn't there right now. <laughs> Sick. Oh man, that's good in game night, isn't it? I guess. They paid a lot of money for that. They paid three credits for that card. Immersion Rex Studio. No, you can draw that. It's not very good. That's really funny. A Wednesday treat, Vincent. Yo, how's it going? I think I have an email from you. I haven't checked yet. I saw it in my in my inbox. I haven't checked it in a while. I gotta look at that. Uh, they know our whole hand. 
Wow! Oh, f three of them. Okay. Okay. All right. So it's two credits to run archives with Omar. And then we can dig in three cards. If we draw a medium, it's okay, but they're probably purge here anyways. Yeah, they're just going to purge. So got to make sure our economy stays up. Ice cover doesn't do anything right now. So we'll just liberate accounts and we'll dig three and then we can like put on pressure anywhere else. Or just set up, I guess. Oh, no. Oh. Omar. Oh, this is four, excuse me. In theory, we should probably install a breaker with four credits and then we have the flexibility of this thing. Oh, we have to make sure we have Bologna credits, which I wasn't actually respecting, but it looks like we're okay. I don't know whether we missed the trigger on this. Traffic Analyzer. That's the card! Hey, we called this! I called this Michael Phelps for some reason, but Trace 2 for Ice Protecting Service, Six of the Corp Gains 1. Oh, man. You have to work really hard for that to be a thing. There's an Are You About Attack, which goes with it. Pop-up window. Oh man, they have some cheap ice. Probably actually wanted to trash that thing, I think, the first one. I feel like there is an economy engine like somewhere in there. Uh, okay. There actually probably is an agenda in here and we're not focusing on this one enough. Oh, we'll keep that in hand, we won't show that. Cause even just like mawing anything, sorry, hippoing anything in here will make the survey a lot worse. Uh, we don't need another point mo. Actually, do we even need this? No, we have all our breakers. Huh. What is his name? What did I miss? Uh, we played, we saw the Ronald 5. We're right now on game net. It's a really weird game net list. Uh, it's Phelps something, right? What am I thinking of? When's the rev up with traffic analyzer? This will be fun with zero link. Yeah, right? The one link is a huge deal in this matchup. So that's traffic analyzer. I don't know what that is. That's an Arya about attack. Did they draw? Yeah, okay. So they drew a traffic analyzer and they drew the other card. You missed an action? Stefan, did I? What do you mean? Henry Phillips? That's it. That's Michael Phelps. How's it going, Stefan? Three out of four? Did I not do an action? Is that possible? I don't believe. I don't think you let this do this. Liberated, Omar. Draw, liberate. No, we're good. We're good. I guess we Omar HQ here. Oh, Surat City Grid. Are you about it? Uh oh. <laughs> Wait. Oh, the combo's happening. We should have trashed this. When everyone has a piece of ice protecting the server, trace two. If successful, the corp gains one. Wait, is this like an infinite combo thing? Yeah, we definitely should have trashed this. Because now they can res everything and everything should be super cheap. And then we'll lose a bunch of credits. Okay, pop-up window. Yeah, we definitely should have trashed Traffic Analyzer. I think that was a mistake. Increase to three. Okay. Okay. Wait, why? Why are they gaining money? Well, why are they gaining money? Oh, it pays one to increase the trace. Ooh. So you should fit to found the Mary B. Hey. Happy New Year. Why? I'm, oh, I'm spending money. Oh, hold on. <sighs> okay. Okay, what do we know? First, we know the server is toilet. So if I don't spend three, they get, no, we, just, we still spend three every time, don't we? He 
You can't get out of this? Well, no, they, we can get out of it. Like, we're just going to bankrupt ourselves. And then they'll run out of things to res. Like, yeah, it's going to drain all our money, that's for sure. This is a neat combo. We definitely should have uh, trashed this 100%. Yeah, we 100% should have trashed Sovereignty. That was a huge misplay. The best is always to spend. Yeah, if we spend, uh, we definitely want to spend. And it's only this server, so like, that wasn't that bad. It's only this server. I didn't even realize that. Okay, that's way worse than, than I thought it'd be. That's really cool, though. But now we know the server is trash. Well, barring this surveyor. All good? <laughs> cool. <laughs> that was weird. They might have divert power hours on. Oh, you're right. They might. That'd be pretty neat. That would be pretty cool. Okay, my mouse is perfect. That's on JNet. I think it's like I don't even know if they can afford tag punishment. If we have a boomerang too, like the server does nothing. Oh no, that's not true. You need pop up money window. Pop up window money. I think we go HQ here. We can't steal Bologna, but we know the top of R and D. Okay. That's a good install. Yeah, we got a new mouse. Maddie got a new mouse uh, for me for Christmas. That's the time you whip out the emulation script. Oh man, emulation script is really great. I wish there was more slots for cards like that. Everyone runs three of the same thing, especially if you have like ice punishment. We like, you know, now Parasite's a thing. Oh uh, yeah, we're now on a Death Adder V2. Which uh, is a really good mouse. I used to have a Death Adder. It clicks really nice. Uh, the DPI is really, really high. Um, it The only difference is the other one, Logitech has this really cool feature where you can basically de-lock. You know how your mouse wheel uh, goes by increments when you wheel it? You can hit a button on the Logitech mouse and so you can like free scroll, which is really, really cool. This doesn't have it, but I think otherwise it's a much nicer mouse. Well, because it works. <laughs> That's a base point. Okay, so we're gonna get a DreamNet card. We're not gonna get a credit, so I'm gonna click once so that we can steal Bologna. Can't wait to see how your new mouse speeds up your play. Get those reaction times down. Yo, that's you fucking esports. I'll do this here so we don't goof the trigger. This is two new cards. Beal, good game. GG. <laughs> that's wild. I love this mouse to get reaction times on JNet. Yo, then you need a low latency monitor. I think I'm at one to three milliseconds latency monitor. And that's really good. Then you need your gamer fuel, which now I realize that's actually a product. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, if they like iced up our uh, archives a bit better, we would have had struggled a bit because like we are running out of economy. That's well, no, we get a Trickster Taka down and then we're in a pretty good spot. Like that's two credits of value a turn. We have three Rizekis. We can hold on. But once we get the medium down, I guess they purge every turn, but uh, I don't know. That's pretty wild. Let me open the list. Michael Phelps. What? It has boom? Three boom? Why? Okay, well, this is the first time publishing, so we can we can definitely look at it. Just catch your end. Okay. So let's look at this list. They pu published this. So there's that really cool combo in it. Uh, this is probably not a competitive combo, but the idea is that you have Surat City Grid, which lets you res your stuff for free. Now, unfortunately, the Ice Suite, oh, this is actually a bit different because they have pop-up windows and stuff like that. So they probably refined it since then. But the three boom, I, I don't think is ever correct. Like, I, I feel like three boom, 
you're probably better off playing one or two boom and then playing uh instead of the third boom or even second boom you playing um archive memories which is probably really good for a combo deck anyways but lets you archive memories into boom which means you can always boom someone if they have the proper tags even if they trash it uh and they also do for what it's worth have the the, the wayland influence to play uh, consulting visit so they could even do that and then play one fear of boom uh, in terms of the combo, it looks like they did uh, optimize it with like cheaper ice to get that going. Um, I still think like, oh, and they also now have that like reality 3D type thing, whatever that thing's called. But like just getting that super server, I don't know if that's ever worth it. It's really cool though. This is the first iteration. Yeah, I believe it. I don't know if they published the second one. ID would not proc without actual credit loss, which means it would change the credit differential to only one for winning trace. Man, I love this sort of deck building though. Yeah, this list is not on Cyberdex either. That's a good point. There's definitely a lot of changes you can make to it. It looks like this one has, you know, more of the Tracy stuff. Like, they didn't even have Surveyor. I think that's where the booms went. And I kind of like that better. Like, you need to lock out your remote more than you need to boom someone. Because, like, this is a, a combo deck that's trying to, like, combo down their credits so that you can do hard hitting to boom. But I feel like if you just kind of, I don't know, play the game in Netrunner a bit more aggressively, that can matter. I don't know. What's the Surreth trying to res? Anything. Uh, oh wait, actually this one doesn't even have the... Okay, so Surret is trying to res basically anything, because Traffic Analyzer says whenever you res a piece of ice, protecting the server trace too. And then if they boost into trace, if you get money, and if they don't boost into trace, you get Arya about attack, so you always should boost into the trace. But it can have these like ridiculous swings. JTFQ made many changes in trials, I still think that Wayland could benefit from that combo. That's actually really nice, I'd be interested to look at that. On that note, hey, I need to pop for uh, pop out for just a bio break. I'm just gonna put some music on and I'll be back in maybe like three minutes. Not even. So, hey, I'll be right back. You can hear that, right? Yeah. Okay.
So, what does the song use for this as a jam? Um, I have a playlist. You're probably not talking about this one, Chris, because this one's only 58 seconds in. Maybe that was too loud. Um, but the one that played previously, this one's called Garrett. It's called The Future is Beautiful by Garrett Bevins. And the one prior was Binary Love by Stanley Gervich. How's everyone doing? Welcome. Hey, Andre, awesome play playlist. Thanks, Frank. It's all from uh, Artlist, which is a website for licensing music. I pay a flat subscription and I can do literally whatever I want with the music. Uh, and it takes a while to find music I'm okay with, but I'm glad everyone likes it. it smells like cologne, what? I mean, this is good in a way, but Andre's break music always makes me feel like I'm in H&M or something. <laughs> I, I haven't been in H&M in years. I kind of swore them off. I don't know. Poor Valley, how's it going? Welcome. With Rex Studio already in the deck, I'd rather go DQ plus Agenda and one big remote. It's still a cool combo, though. Yeah, that's kind of the problem with Rex Studio, though, right? Like, it's literally putting all your eggs in a single basket. I don't know whether you'd be better building two remotes. For what it's worth, their version also did end up having us uh, Jinja. It's like actually pretty different than this list. Smells like cologne. Just kidding. These streams are highly every week. Hey, Ubi, glad glad it can be. Uh, we can be such a good part of your week. So, what are you up to today? Um, we've been playing the decklist the week. At this point, we probably need to just build something or play a different deck. I've been kind of well. I haven't been playing too much Netrunner. We haven't been streaming so far over the break due to the weird timings of Thursdays. We won't be streaming tomorrow because it'll be New Year's. Um, we'll probably well we'll stream the week after. I don't think we'll be able to stream this weekend. Um, Otherwise, I haven't been playing so much the Salvage Memories format. I've actually been pretty scared of it. I just don't know if I like those cards so much. Oh, yeah, Sanjay's. GD Giyanti and Christmas deck. I know he, uh, Sanjay did a stream for this. Uh, so I've been kind of like, I don't know. I've been, been intimidated by the meta, which is a weird, a weird stance. So uh, I want to figure out what things look like. I'm imagining that this is just like a Haley deck that has cash in it now. Uh, I think that's good and has indexing. This is probably a really strong list. Ooh, and a single parasite. Ooh, that's cute. A single imp is good. Double harbinger, triple cash. Wow, that's not something I considered. I thought they'd just play fewer of these. And they're not actually playing, what is that, like, um, that Aesop's Pawn Shop event? I thought they'd play that too. Pat, I mean, hi. How's it going, Pat? Did you say something before? How you doing, bud? You back yet? I don't think so. No, you are. You're back, right? My email includes a Netrunner theme song I made, but it's a little more grimy than your typical cyber music. Oh, let me check that out. Yo, Vesper, what up? Hey, yo, doing something silly for later tonight. One hopes and enjoying the stream. Thanks for all the great goodies all year and all best y'alls for 2021. But Vesper, to you as well. It's been a pleasure this year. I think it's the first time that we like did stuff together with this year, and it was lovely. Take care of yourself, Vesper. It blocked my cuss. <laughs> I'm back in town. Welcome back, Pat. Yeah, let's play this. This looks okay. So let's just see how strong indexing is, which is uh, incredibly strong. I wonder if people have teched for it, whether we're seeing Mirage's, Border Control R&D, whether we're seeing uh, just, you know, Chrism Goods. But the team is good. We got Ingolo, which is really strong. Ika, which is probably the weakest link here, but you generally Ingolo your sentries. And Lady is a hell of a card, whether or not you need your Cyber Trooper to loot. This is incredible. Incredibly good card, especially with the added benefit of Simul Chip. Let's give it a shot. Seems just good. First that hacking Christmas. New runner deck. Yeah, I don't know. My analysis of this would be like Cash and Harbinger are actually relatively similar. I never really considered playing more of them, and that honestly is pretty good. This doesn't take up any MU, which is nice. It's not credit positive the turn you install it. Cash, for what it's worth, gets more value out of simul chip if you want a simul chip of cash. Uh, but otherwise, I don't know. That's cool. What could the single remove Wayland ID leverage with full immersion? Urban Renewal Daily Quest? I think we did a deck that was exactly that. I think. Not Urban Renewal. Urban Renewal seems worse than just scoring agendas, because that's how you win games, I think. Double Urban Renewal, though. Now you're talking. 
I'm pretty sure we did a deck like this. Hey, hold on. Let's see what we did. That's La Costa, which is different. No, not that. Going up. No, I feel like we played uh, that card recently. I don't know. No, I can't search by card, unfortunately. What's a good question? I don't know. Kakos, what's up? Didn't know you're streaming. How's it going? It's going well. We've been streaming for about two hours. Uh, we haven't had enough time to stream during the holidays, so getting some, some quality time in, in today. How's your holidays, Kakos? Run. Yeah. Now, I don't think we have Rezekis in this list, which uh, makes sense. Like, we generally don't need that. We have Proco, Pawn Shop, Casts. Uh, that's generally pretty good for economy. And then we just always pawn these caches and Harbingers over and over and again. But uh, against assets, like, we might be a bit weaker. We do have Double Stim Hack, which helps. Um, but we just want to get our engine going and then get Card Drug going. And then we should be okay. I'm so pumped for new cards. Want those spoilers? Yeah, I think everyone really wants some spoilers right about now. We'll get them relatively soon, I'm assuming. I haven't heard anything. And Nisa has been really good at doing outreach for like community members, content creators to get like cards and be like talk about them or whatever. So hopefully we hear about that soon. Uh, especially because like this new product coming out is going to be really important. Pretty good, thanks. Getting ready tomorrow with Sparklers and you. Oh. Um, I don't think Maddie and I have really strong plans for New Year's. I think last New Year's we, we celebrated with Pat. And we played some some board games and hung out. Uh, this year, I don't know what we're going to do. Watch a ball drop on the internet somewhere? Watch a movie maybe? All right. Oliver 1111. Against Argus, we don't have any... Oh, we do have Misdirection, but we don't have like Citadel or anything. And uh, indexing actually is countered by an Atlas with a counter, which is pretty interesting. And this is a good, like, this is not a good setup hand, but this is a good, like, there's a lot of economy in that hand. Like, you can do indexing into Dirty Laundry, which is, can be pretty rude, but then we have to take the tags from meat damage. I feel like a lot more times we'd rather set up, although this is probably not a game where we're going to get to the mid to late game. This is probably going to be a faster game, but I still think we mulligan for, like, Proco Pawn Shop. <laughs> Oliver 111, now we know White Blade Smurf. I'm never sure which numbers are on White Blade because half the time it's ones, half the time it's twos. Best of luck. That was a good low key New Year's. That was nice. It's mulligan for more setup. Yeah, that's strictly worse, I think. The clot's actually kind of nice against hostiles. Uh, and the misdirection is definitely valuable, but we don't want to lose that to like a damage. Well, actually, we don't care. We have someone chip. I just found out that I lost against this deck in the tournament. Dunch, what, this, this, oh, this deck, right. Hey, no worries. Oh, you played the Christmas tournament? What was that? Oh, I just hit my hand on the table really bad. What am I doing? <laughs> they kept, okay. So we're Haley, we want to go for that double install. We don't have a good double install. I don't want to show we have misdirection, so we're going to draw up first two. We always do like uh, SMC into cash, and that theory threatens clot. Don't injure yourself, it's just net running. You're not taking this competitively. Cool. Early ice, a single advance gets a bit scarier, otherwise, it looks like a Rashida. Maybe just setting up a prize sec. I don't know. But like, this is where you can just like slam indexing and be so obnoxious. Uh, the Dirty Laundry definitely helps to like clear the tag. We could, we easily could have kept the first hand. It's definitely better than this one, but I was looking for Proko and like Bath and stuff. Pawn Shop. Thought it was a fun play. Oh, nice. Yeah, one more click. Oh, oh, single advance. Oh, single advance. 26 afternoon CT on the Berlin tournament discord. Oh, cool. That's probably where the Hoshiko list came from too, right? Okay, single advance. 
So in theory, we could like do cache into self-modified code and run this. Now the big issue is uh, if it's an NGO front, but I still think they were fine. I think we're gonna go for that play. So to pull out a lady, it's six credits. This forces them to res. So like, what are they resing here? What is a smurf? A smurf is when somebody plays, uh, generally somebody who's a high caliber play or a known player plays on an account that nobody knows. So for instance, like if you want to be in a tournament, but you don't want people to know who you are, uh, you'll have a smurf. If Wayne Gretzky played beer league. Yeah, it's like if Wayne Gretzky showed up to a tournament, but signed himself in as like uh, Dave Firewater or whatever. For what it's worth, like, I do have a smurf. Um, sometimes I want to play. People are, like, very friendly. Oh, we lost the clot. That's probably fine. Like, people are incredibly friendly. And sometimes I just want to play a game. And, uh... Or, like, I want to, like, spectate on second monitor. And, like, I don't have the, the, the bandwidth to be, like, you know, respond to people. Be like, hey, Andre, how's it going? So, like, I have a smurf. <laughs> Dave Firewater, new ID. Side note, smurf accounts require one to paint themselves all blue and wear a white hat. What do we got here? Corset 4-2? That's not legal anymore. Beer bag registering Dave Firewater is that new Gentechi ID. What? Why'd they concede? Why'd they leave? What happened? We were having a game in Netrunner! Why did this happen? Feels bad, and not for me. Like the fact that their experience with Netrunner was so bad that they had to leave a game, that sucks. Oh, that's a bummer. <laughs> it was their favorite hostel. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Like, I've, I just feel bad that, that, that that's the situation. Like, when you lose one agenda and you concede the game. Like, oh, man, you're having a horrible day. I get it. That sucks. I used to do that a lot, sadly. Oh, man. Yo, Mark Andre, how's it going, man? Happy holidays. Don't even need a smurf for this person to rage quit. I feel like smurfing implies playing below your actual skill level, not just make, masking your identity. I don't know, because a lot of people smurf to like jump into lower ranks to just stomp people. Right? Like in, I don't know, League of Legends or whatever. Ooh, Jemison. Ooh, let's go. Thanks, you too. This is also the cool t a thing of playing at different times than normal is that you actually like run into people that you've never played against before, as far as we know. Okay, opening hand. This is good. Uh, we could do like click to three daily cast pro co. That's good enough. Oh, a clot is so important in this matchup. We also have no tech against the Junebug cheese, so we're going to have to just like play smart. It's about them and their nervousness or frustration, clearly. They were, pl they seemed like they were playing like very nervously. Um, they were like very, uh, they took time between their clicks. Ooh, standoff. Oh, I can't. You win this one, my friend. Yo, Jessica, what up? Just got home from the last day of work. As a new lockdown has been announced for me, going to start the stream from the beginning. Yo, Jessica, cheers. Enjoy. Hopefully, enjoy your holiday. I uh, hope the whole lockdown's good enough where you're at. I take it the UK, huh? I don't know. I might be guessing. I think it's the UK, right? I do have multiple snurfs, not because I'm good or famous, because Jaina was crawling and I heard the reason slows down is having too many decks. It was faster to register new accounts and delete. Yeah, it's really slow to delete decks. Okay, I'm just gonna set up the like the old classic Proco daily casts. It's not a really flashy turn, but it's we're good for the future. <laughs> Maybe I had to save someone really quick. I've seen that before, where like somebody call like is AFK for a while and they come back and be like, "Sorry, there's a fire in the kitchen or something wild." So there's a real threat here that this could be. Um, well, firstly, they're ice. A lot of people like Tithonium and Archer and that sort of stuff, and Tithonium is a lot worse than Archer at this point. But uh, there's a chance that this is a uh, an Oberth protocol, and then things get bad for us. But let's see how it goes. We have indexing, which can absolutely destroy them. Uh, draw, 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 double install. I don't want to last click install. Uh, imp. That seems bad. So we're just gonna do the value. I'm gonna play Cyberpunk. Catch the rest of the vod. Take care, yo, Lumil. Enjoy your Cyberpunk. Um, let me know how it goes once you beat it. I'd love to hear people's opinions on Cyberpunk. I haven't gotten into it yet. I think I'm gonna wait a bit, but enjoy it. To be fair, I've also had to bail in games because my kids puked everywhere. So who knows? 
Yeah. So they did a wall-to-wall -wall balance, a single advance on a card. Okay, so do we have Angola money this turn? Unlikely. Can we smash Centrals? More likely. Tithonium is bad. Archer is not bad. Tithonium is like kind of bad. Uh, Tithonium. It's like five strength? Five strength. So we have to pay four, five, six, what we? So it's SMC plus six plus two, eight. Okay, well, we'll just start with Proko. That's good. Yeah, okay, we'll let them have the first couple agendas before we we put down R&D lock. Uh, this is interesting. I'm going to put an SMC here. It actually doesn't threaten, uh, threaten clot lock. Shit. Oh, we just pawn something. Oh, we actually didn't have to do that. Oops. Because we can double install next turn. I think we're just going to proco once more, which means we should have done that before installing. It's a misplay. I always forget how to get card info. Yeah, you just type it. Atlas with counter. Shit, our indexings are a bunch worse. It's so many bad shapers decks. Donkey Cyberpunk vid sums up the game pretty well. I didn't agree with the Donkey Cyberpunk vid. I don't agree with Donkey that much. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting old. I don't think his like his uh his critical editorial content is as strong as I think he thinks it is. I'm interested to hear like a a, a, a Noah Gervais response to it, or like a Matthew Matosis response, or uh. A Jacob Geller response. I don't think Donkey's digs are too deep. Okay, we want to get the stuff down. We want to start doing something because they're kind of running away with it. But we're Shaper. We will get there. And this is a really good card. We want to wait for them to use the Alice token. We can also just bait the Alice token. But generally, we want HQ pressure to follow it. But hey, we're Shaper. We're going to shape. Honestly, we could just install Imp and just go in for Centrals. Yeah, that seems fine. Imp can hit Biotic and other stuff, and I'm comfortable running at this point. <laughs> not getting Proko turn one. It's not Cat? Yeah, fuck it. I got Cyberpunk at PS4 but haven't touched in a while due to potato quality. You can return it for what's worth. On the other hand, Immortals Phoenix Rising has been surprisingly fun. I, uh, I work for Ubisoft, so take this with a grain of salt, but I did beat Immortals Phoenix Rising and thoroughly enjoyed myself. I thought it was pretty cool. All right, so now we have the money. We have the control. The most damage they can do to us is four. So we'll proco once, bad ordering, and then we'll run here. Because in theory, they could put two counters on here with Junebug, or is it even more counters? Hold on. Place one advancement token on a card and one additional token for each agenda point that agenda was worth. Okay, well, it's different now. Oh, they put it on here. Okay. So this is probably the wall to wall, which is fine that they res this archer. Uh, so we have to either thinking, I don't know whether it's cheaper to Ika and N'Golo this. I think N'Golo is almost always cheaper, but there's a chance we don't have enough money. So to install N'Golo, it's shit. I don't play enough shaper. Yeah, Jester, what's up? So it's going to be 7, then we 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, we can do all our money. But what's Ika like? Because the Ika is like, what, 2 to host, 2 to SMC. So that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Then we go through. And I don't think this is an agenda. I think this is uh, the wall-to-wall -wall that they returned. I think we're just going to go for the N'Golo. I wish we could stem hack the N'Golo at, but... We're just not going to let the worst subroutines fire. Hello? Uh. Plongi would be good here? Yeah, Plongi is just kind of hard in the meta. I feel like there's a lot of virus hate. Oh, wait, we don't have the money. No, uh, I overboosted. That's why. Excuse me. You got Angola before you hit continue to counter for the trigger. Oh, thank you. Wait, wait, so wait, wait, hold on. 
Uh, no, never mind. Yeah, no, that's legit. That's legit. Okay. Yeah, Plunk would be good. I got Immortals as a gift. I'm really happy with it. Valhalla first and then Immortals. Uh, it's going to take you a while to get to Immortals if you do Valhalla first, let me tell you. At first, it seemed like a total Breath of the Wild clone, but the more I play it, the less I mind. Yeah, it does a lot of really good stuff. It does a lot of really, really good stuff that's different from Breath of the Wild, but it, yeah, it definitely looks a bit similar. I don't know. I don't know if I'm allowed to be critical about the games that I'm employed by. So they advanced this. This looks like an Aket. Could be Masfingo. Masfingo is actually pretty good against uh, uh, the, the dog we have. So I think we have to pop an indexing, but I think right now more than ever, we just want to stabilize our board because we did sacrifice a bunch of our board. Can't keep a shaper down. We had double hardware install, which is nice because our MU is getting a bit tight. Let's just force them to res something, I think. Got Cyberpunk for PS4. It's crashed four times. It's been popping and audio glitches, but I'm fine with that, though. I've been enjoying it. It's solid 8 out of 10. Nice. All right, let's see what they pull first, and then we can see what we need to break. Event, event, event. Piss. The three advancements actually does matter in this one weird matchup where they have advanceable ice. So this is a bit of expensive. But we want to like get our imp down so we can pawn it. I guess we could pawn the ga ga casts. Hostile, uh, we'll steal it. That's good. Generally, if you, you target or you get their lower agendas, it's harder for them to combo out. Um, and then we'll install some stuff. We're weak to, in theory, to, um, to like tag punishment. Ethereum Plunk and Quetzal is pretty neat. Yeah, we played against that the last time we streamed, and like I want to play that deck because it looks really fun. So either a cat could be also Mouse Lust or, uh, or um, what's it called? Or Hordetum, but I think a cat's the worst case. Maybe we also have to prepare for a Colossus of some sort. Let's see if they keep getting advancements on here. It also could just be a Trick of Light battery. Like, that kind of makes sense in this list. Oh, we only have one credit. We're not threatening fast advance. Is that another hostile? Oh, it's NGO. That's fine. I actually, this play, like, they need to do it because they need money. But for what it's worth, right? Like, they could have waited till we had more money. So this actually bluffs and pulls out a clot. Like, bluffing an NGO front uh, for a clot is so cool. And I wish that was done more often. So we'll pawn this before it gets destroyed. Okay, I think we diesel. I feel like the Proco money is probably a bit better. But well, we know what we're drawing into actually. Wait, we don't need a we don't need to do math. Yeah, we're drawing to sure gamble. So I'm gonna go first. Actually, no, we can do diesel into dirty laundry archives. Dirty laundry archives isn't amazing. We'll see three cards though. Uh the fuck? Okay. They threw this out too. While well, we have a clot in the bin. Oh we don't. That's terrifying. And that is weird. I guess it's just a forfeit card. And with lockdown, that makes sense. Okay, so we got to be a bit more mindful of where we put our programs. So do we have a double install this turn? We could proco once and hope. Yeah, it feels fine. We don't need to do the sure gamble this turn. Shit, okay. Uh, SMC is cool because then we could like pop the SMC, uh, but then we don't have another thing to install. Like we could pop SMC for a cash, and then if we had like a harbinger from hand, that'd be good. Uh, we can always like simul chip for the harbinger, but they have to trash a card. That seems bad too. Okay, whatever. We'll just do that. It's probably a better play there. Why so much arc lockdown these days? Just because of bin breakers, lack of other good common recursion? I don't know. I think this is like Jaina casual lobby. I don't think is too representative of like competitive meta, but I think we've seen two arc lockdowns today. One of the lists I wouldn't, wasn't surprised as playing in it. I think anarch bin breakers are good. I feel like playing around simul chip is way too difficult to do it. Compellingly. IMO. 
I guess we just run this. I don't know. Can't say I understand. Do we want to pawn something? I don't think so. So then this is two, four, five, six, seven, generally around seven credits, which is a lot. That leaves us with not too much for this. If I, if I could, if I could stim hack this, I would. We'll pro cut once. Nah. Border control here would be a nightmare. HQ has to be flooded? I think that's a really good point. I'm not thinking about that. Andre Classic understatement. Jaina Casual is not too representative of the competitive meta. It's not. It's, it shouldn't be. It's good. People are having fun out here. I'll buy it. I don't know what this could be. I think it's a Tithonium. Oh, it's a Surveyor. Well, we can engulf both of these. Thinking. I have no idea what the math on Ika is. So we'd have to SMC it, then we have to install it for 4, then boost break, no that's stupid, that's dumb. So we have to engulf this, Wait, how do we deal with 2 sentries in a row, we have to use Ika. Oh we could also just like engolo and then simul chip engolo. that's really expensive, that's like 4 to just get going again. We need stim hack for this. We have two stim hacks. Ugh. Uh, we're not gonna go through. I think we're just gonna get HQ. Because they have like foods and like five threes in hand. So this trace we care about. The other trace is fine. They spend more money than us. They have to raise the Zaket, which is like what? Three credits to get back one? Or is it two credits? Oh, they boosted. Oh, happy days. We still got an imp two here. So if we hit like an audacity or a biotic or a trickolite or literally anything. Oh, oh. It's an engram flush, it's a ruse. So that's actually pretty cool with, uh, we can see what they call first, but that's actually pretty neat when it comes to our clock down. They named a vent. Oh, that's double indexing. I was like, wait, we got none. I don't remember where this card is. Okay, well their money's bad. Surveyor, yeah, fuck off. Okay, so if we play our events, I'm going to play around it. So I think next turn we pawn this and then we SMC aggressively for like uh, for uh, caches and stuff. I wonder how good an oops all centuries deck would be in the current meta. Honestly, probably fine. Oh, that's really good for them. And that's a really cool card, right? Because like you get the value and then you get rid of it. That's really strong for them right there. Damn, that was good. Wait, what am I doing? Wait, this is not right. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Okay, so we still have that index pressure. They're gonna have one credit. I think we can just tunnel on that. Let's just make sure we have some value. So I'll pawn this, then it's gonna use this. How much time, yeah. So we're gonna use this to pull out, I guess a clot, it's a bit more, yeah, we'll get a clot in the bin. Oh, not a clot, fuck, I'm in a cache, whoops. I've done it again. Ugh. Oh man. I 
first time playing Shaper. This never happens, trust me. <laughs> okay, so... Oh wait, no, that was a real SMC. Shit on me. Fuck! Ah, because I thought it was the real uh, SMC, so I'm going to miss the trigger here. So we're going to install a cache, uh, and then we'll use the click. Okay, there, there. Nailed it. Ten point landing. Judge. I haven't had a coffee today. Okay, we've already pawned something. So I think we just smash index things. See how bad this can be. The advancement counters don't matter, so at least event, program, event. So that's worth breaking. We're drawing a stim hack, a harbinger, and a diesel. Okay, that's always worth knowing because we want to draw into stim hack. We don't want them to have money. Now they will shuffle this. People come to the stream for the flawless playing. Uh, indexing, it's been a while since we've seen that word. Oh, that's a game win. Okay. 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 They can obviously shuffle it and they have to. Oh, we didn't draw our stim hack. What are we doing? Harbinger event resource. That's fine though. At least we can let that fire. Atlas bluff check? Yeah, let's see if they do it. Ah, oh, good. Okay. Shuffle R&D. Pull it hard to hand. How many points of brain damage? None so far. Okay. Standard procedure? What is that? Oh, they're on Salem's. Uh-oh. I think. I don't think that's an uh-oh. Another standard procedure. Joke's on them. Okay, so our next indexing is legit. Okay, that's more fuel. Yeah, we definitely should have drawn into the stim hack because that remote is actually getting pretty difficult. They're going to start the turn on two credits. They can't do much besides click for credits. I guess standard procedure can make money. It costs two? No. Oh, and they also know perfectly what two cards in our hand are because we just drew and showed them. They named event and they got indexing diesel. So that's four credits. Pretty good. Yeah, Sam's rig shooting. Yeah, and I think if they're on uh, this, they're probably on Sam's hospitality just for the... Okay, never mind, I got money. Yeah, there's Sam's Hospitality. They just hit indexing, right? Cool. So we have one more indexing. I think that's our only win con. We don't actually have any other uh, R&D. We have no multi-axis besides that last indexing. This actually is going to be a hard matchup for us. I don't think we have to do any tricks here. Pawn that. Find that last indexing. Let's draw into another of the last casts. No. So we don't have any really strong double installs here. I don't think that, that we actually care about the misdirection. I think we just pawn it. Keep going. Ibrahim and Jemison, value forfeit. Yeah, but I think they have support and there you go. Arch is also trash, yeah. Same with Tithonium, trash is resources. Not that those come back that often. But this is the issue is that like, we now have to win off singles, which I guess we camp the remote, but that remote's gonna get very difficult. We're not very good at dealing with sentries. Excuse. Let's find some agendas. Let's see what they call. Event. program uh do we pay four credits to save a lady probably probably anger flush is so good it's disgusting 
We know they have SDS. Talk about SDS. So that's why we keep this thing around. I guess the misdirection is technically yours. Because this we can turn into points. Okay, so feeling good now we're on game point. We know they have more SDSs in their deck. Yeah, they have a pretty legitimate rig shooting base. I think they, if they have batty too, like I would actually be scared. Oh, that's good. That's how we win. Unless that's a border control. So I think we can just set up for that. Uh, yeah, it's one fewer event in hand, I guess. I don't know. This also becomes an eco. Yeah, this is definitely worth keeping. Another dirty laundry means we can easily poke HQ and not too bad, big of a loss of tempo. We also could consider like just uh, bringing the imp back with a uh, simul chip. I think that's probably worth doing. Okay. We haven't seen an Oberth or anything too fancy. Oh, that's good. So we could pull out like a simul chip into imp to install cash. We get blown out by the CVS to some extent. Uh, we also could just go for Windexing, which I feel good. Some cool card ways to fast events on SDS and gem as well. Yeah, that's true. You can fast events five threes. I think we can just go for it. Because if this lands, it lands hard. Okay, cool. So in theory, we can let all these fire. Resource hardware program, so that's firing. And we know we have a pro on bottom, that's good. So simul chip into clot. Excuse me? Hardware program event. So stim hack is two down. Okay, so unless this is like an executive boot camp, this is generally a good stim hack. Or indexing. Yeah, that's it. Sandbox Alice sounds. Oh, that's so rough. Wow. Three, four, five, seven points of agendas. Wow. Program event program. I'm gonna break it. We don't need to. I don't know. Maybe there's advanced encounters on some card that like shuffles. I don't think there are. This has to be executive boot camp, right? There's nothing else. Event program program. Just in case. Good game. Third indexing sneaks through. That'll do it. Uh, there, that that was a wild indexing. There's a CVS and Atlas under under it. GG. Is indexing better than Hushik? A billion times better than Hushik. Three hundred times better than Hushik. Infinitely better than Hushik. At least Shadow Net isn't around. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Or uh, what's it called? Um, you can turn one. Yo, Ratash, what up? What can Hushik cannot do? Yeah, okay. So let's talk about Hushik. Hushik first needs an immense amount of setup, which is really good in terms of like the game, so you don't get blown out turn one and lose on turn one, which is a possibility. I'm okay with that. Hushik also is expensive. It's cost three credits. Now, immediately, you don't have to run twice, so sometimes it can be cheaper. Hushik looks at up to six, slightly better, but you can only access one of those cards, while indexing lets you rearrange the cards, and so you can set up multiple agenda steals, and let alone like bury operations, bury ice, and have full information on what the corp is going to draw. So even if you can't get back in that turn, you can put the agenda on the fourth card or the fifth card. Sure. Now, Hushik does hen have the counterplay of things like, you know, uh, shuffling the deck, which is actually pretty limited for what it's worth. There's like only two th cards that do that that see any play. I think so too. Um, indexing is absurd. <laughs> Prepaid Hushik. Yeah, I don't know. Like, Hushik seemed to be like them trying to do indexing in a more uh, reasonable way. Uh, also, for what it's worth, indexing classically was even better with other cards, like, uh, which isn't a thing anymore. But what's that one where you run and it's worth another agenda points? Um, Mad Dash. It works with Mad Dash. Hushik doesn't. Now, you could always do freedom through equality, but like, you could win in a turn easily in a three point agenda uh, meta. You do indexing, Mad Dash, GG. Or you run again. I don't know. Indexing is just so strong. So strong. 
How does it compare to Top Height Insight? Uh, Top Height Insight is definitely interesting and janky. It's also incredibly slow. And again, indexing has pressure threat turn one. And it also, uh, you, the corp rearranges their cards as opposed to the, the runner. That being said, Top Hat's like not a bad card, I think, even without Insight. It's like a pseudo medium. It's not amazing, but whatever. My local group set up a draft one time. There was a deep data mining on the draft. My opponent won on turn one and click run by deep data mining six points. The score limit in the draft format is six. Yeah, that's true. It's really snowing out. I think that's a snowplow that's going by. Um, yeah, deep data mining also was like, I don't understand. I, I, I just like don't understand cards like that. And I'm glad that like the design of Hushik is a bit like it only fires in the mid to light game, kind of like the complete image threat. Maybe I'm a coward, but I like when more powerful abilities aren't triggerable turn one. Instead, it lets you decide whether or not run R&D, which is worth running without the credit investment. No, that's true. But for what it's worth, there's a card that lets you look at the top of R&D every turn for a click and nobody plays it. Medium and R&D consistency really overshadowed it. Revised chord made a shine. Well, the thing also with like medium and R&D interface differently is that's more about R&D lock, right? Like back in the day when people were fast advancing out, if you could see the top two or three cards of R&D uh, every second turn, they'll never draw into agenda. And then eventually uh, fast track came out and that changed everything. But R&D lock is like a very legitimate win condition and medium does it in a much more potent way. What you doing live? Pink, how's it going? Happy holidays. It's a higher skill level, I think, with this deck than the Hoshiko deck that we're playing. And I'm not as good with it. I think Hoshiko is much more my style. This has way more triggers to figure out how to get efficiency out of. And I feel like I'm not that good at the control game. I'm a bit too aggro of a player, but we'll run it back. Nice to see you. Yeah. Man, Fast Track is rotating soon. I don't think it matters for what it's worth. Like, I think uh, digital rights management is probably a more healthy version of that. And it's much more flexible with five threes or four twos and upgrades, stuff like that. Four two build a remote. Um, but fast track, it doesn't even see play. I guess it does see a bit of play with like some weird Titan combo decks. Fast track was, I think the strongest corp card in honor and profit when it came out. Uh, that being said, Mushin Notion is probably really strong. And I'm probably forgetting something, but I think Fast Track is the good corp card in that whole set. If I'm not feeling mis am I not am I forgetting something? Shindeki got some good ice at the time. But I think that's the good card. All the cards I started the game loving will be gone. HP and Sansen were where I fell in love with the game. Yeah, me too. I started playing right before Honor and Profit came out. Hey, Arizan, what's in chat? Is in chat? Ooh, Earth Station can be pretty difficult. Um, that's a really good opening hand, though. Fuck, that's really good. I think the only other thing we could ask for is uh, Rashida. Not Rashida. Beth. So again, if they build Super Server, like, we're pretty weak to... Excuse me, Sentry stacking. I'm actually kind of interested in the all Sentry deck. We should try that after this. I wonder how bad the meta is against that. Okay, so we can set up, they can set up. God, that's so good. Now, do we ever install one of these? Nah, we install both of them next turn, this is fine. I'd be interested to know whether a Shaper player would install one of these for a click when we have a double setup next turn. Earth building up the remote, whether they go for that flip they are flipping. So it's six credits to run the remote server. Can we poke HQ? What's the worst that's going to hit us? Probably lose two credits. It looks like a Rashida, but I'll, I'll force him to do something here. Like slot machine? No, I think it's an, uh, what's it called? The two credit lose two HQ ice. Whoa, no further action. What the fuck? Why'd they flip? Oh, Jesus. Atlas, what is going on here? San San City fucking grid. Damn, we playing with the good cards. Our money is abysmal, but we can recover. We just have to hope we don't get punished this turn specifically. Ashfar, Ashfar, Afshar, yeah. Man, that's such a bluff when you don't res this ice. That's three influence. That's really getting the remote. I don't know if they're ever going to build ice on the remote. But we had such a good recovery to spending five there. It's a lot of money. All right, well, Diesel. Imp is good. Cast is good. 
What's drawn to another installable uh, resource, I hope? No, okay. I still think we'll do this. It's a bit slower. But we want to pressure the economy because they clearly don't have that much. Things haven't been the best. Have some time off work at least. Oh, Jessica, pink, are catching up. It's really nice. All right, they're flipping again. Let's go hit that Afshar. I'm not going to trash this one because this one, if we don't, if we keep it around, it gives us simul chip value. So we're going to prioritize the non program destruction. Okay, so if we like perfectly diesel into uh, Angolo. Oh, but we can actually do something really cute here. Oh, yeah, we can goof him up. Let's go. There's an Aket, which we break for free. Again, this did come back. This was one of the strongest fractors in the game. Probably still is. Oh, and they get another flip here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use this to pull in our Angolo so we don't lose the credits. Corporate sales team, what is happening? What do we lose? The imp? Shit. I wanted that. Is it another Sansan? -San? Rashida? Oh, this is going so poorly for them. Okay. They're putting they're putting a target on HQ. They're doing it. They're putting the target there. They're encouraging us to run there, which is so hard when you're holding agendas. Don't flip again. Woo! Woo! No cloth threat. Throwing out everything for the Atlas. Okay. Respect. There was another agenda there. I think we do check our guys. We slam R&D. We can draw into a dirty laundry. Let's get a dirty laundry here. No, that's really good. We'll install both of those. I guess we'll check archives. We don't really need to. Sweeps they didn't play. And a wall to wall, which makes a lot of sense. So we can take a turn here. So now they just have to top deck whatever. And whatever they draw, it either goes in the remote or stays in HQ, obviously. So uh, if they draw agendas, it's really difficult. We just slam HQ. Did they keep or mull that hand? Wonder if they were flooded and just had to gamble they wouldn't run HQ and trash the sand sand. I just don't see, like, uh, the HQ face check on the, um, the Wayland stuff isn't that bad. They kept. So, like, I would definitely smash and force them to rest, especially because it doesn't cost us credit to run there that turn. Okay, we'll take the two off and then the three. Um, I like running HQ here. I don't know what we're scared of. We have N'Golo. We can see the one card they have. Oh, it costs us a credit. Fuck it. What was the rest of their turn? Hedge fund. So they kept one card? No, this run's pretty bad, actually. Because they wouldn't hedge fund down to a single agenda unless that is the play. Archer. Okay. Good to know. Proco. <laughs> There's a dirty laundry. So we just got set up indexing. <laughs> Uh, this gets us an imp, which is actually pretty valuable, considering they have fast advanced pieces. Um, but we don't have anything to pawn. I'll, I'll proco once more, just to get a, because we don't need this, to get a double install coming down. Oh no, fuck, we have four hand size. Oh, my B, my B. SMC gets Cloth Threat, which is like very legitimate in this matchup, but at least we can recur that. Ah, I don't know. If I knew the brain damage, we definitely wouldn't have drawn there. That's my bad. Unknown card. Advance. Advance. Fuck, this is why you play the SMC. We should have played the SMC. That's 14 credits and Archer Fuel. That's such a misplay. Whatever, we'll just index in, right? Oh, that's not going to hold. Do we ever just paint this to save tokens? I don't think so. God, indexing so silly. Oh, you can 100%. They can lose here so easy. They just lost the game for a single ice. Like, this shouldn't be happening. Like, the fact that they have to defend this so well or they just straight up lose is dumb. They just lost. There's no other card that does that. Feels bad. <laughs> be so hard on yourself. Hey, Abby. Thank you. It's it's not so much to beat yourself up. It's so you learn. But like that's just so stupid. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of that. Like they did. 
They can't do anything until they ice up R&D enough, and you'll never ice up R&D enough. Feels bad, man. You just go in. Immediately, like, their economy really struggled. Their early game was heavily punished. And I like they were uh, clearly they had a sweepstake in hand, but they're like they're on this, which is very expensive, and we didn't see enough economy to support that. To be fair, the flood lost in the game, and Dixon just put it over the line. No, sure, but still, like f that's four points whenever we want. <laughs> Maybe we got lucky. I guess Mirage should have been in every deck while indexing was legal. It kind of was for a while, like specifically every like Chintek or Agonfusion deck. I tried to rush that too fast, but only on Resbol. Ooh. I'm wondering what the no res was. I always run HQ uh, if you flip, just to force you to res something because the face checks aren't too bad. Yeah, Mirage was pretty common. I don't know. So the way I also see it, right? Like Earth Station Sand Sand. I don't know. The way I see it, it's like it's cool that you have extra defense on the sand sand, but can you win with the sand sand? Like the point of the sand sand is that it's going to stay on the table. But if someone's not going to run the sand sand, you could have just installed like a Lacosta or something else. It would probably be a bit better or just jam the agendas. So the value of sand sand IMO is either combo or scoring out of hand. And the only thing you can score out of hand here is atlases. And that isn't that good. You can't score four twos. You can't score five threes. You're better off building a legit remote with something like Lacosta if you're doing this. That's what I think. Now, that being said, you have Sansa and plus Audacity, and that's kind of cool, but you are now at the whims of whatever your hand holds. Yeah. Thanks, you too. Thanks. It's not you too. <laughs> Thanks for the game. You don't get the counters either, less you go to four. Yeah, you know, you don't get counters. Like, you need a, you still need advance because it says over three, not over whatever the number is. Sokka's got a good Sansa in Earth Station he's been jamming. I'd be interested to see that. To me, it doesn't. It, the math doesn't line up. It doesn't seem better than, like, uh, La Costa. I have a hard time seeing how to play Sansa well in meta where there isn't a corp with 6-3-2s. Uh, there kind of is, uh, for what it's worth. The Chinteki kind of has it. Like, they have Project Yagi Uda. They have... The problem is, like, they're all blank 3-2s, right? Not that that mattered back in the day. Well, Astro. Uh, but there's the 3-2s. Then you have uh, Medical Breakthrough, which eventually gets there. Don't you kind of need HHN to punish? Well, you need something in theory to punish, but the problem is like trying to have a deck that aggressively like rushes out Sansan and fast advances and has the hard-hitting news punishment can be pretty difficult. And that's why like, you know, Sansan City Grid just behind a single ice or no ice and CTM is probably more worth the effort. Oh, Merger's still a card. No, no, Vincent, like Merger's still a card slash S. Like that's legitimate. Merger is still a card. It's a hell of a liability in an indexing meta or a medium meta, but yeah, you could merge her, I guess. There's also a Jinteki 4-3, which is worth looking at. The, also, the other issue is like, this doesn't work with with Jinja. Oh, sorry, with uh, Jeeves. If this worked with Jeeves, like, oh my god, you fast advance Jinteki all you want. But this doesn't work with Jeeves, which is a bummer. I wanted GNK with merger once. Count it. It's, a, it's an event-winning card. I mean, CTZ and Brian fast advance of any project this week. <laughs> Anything is possible. Um, yeah. And you know what? Like, that sounds wild, and it, it's because it is. But even in, like, some not unreasonable uh, Titan decks, you can fast advance global foods out of hand. I don't think it's that difficult. HP Vitruvius and Grand Prix. Oh, that's another good combo for sure. And you can do that in, in, in Asa. You can do that in Sports Metal. Grand Prix is a hell of a card. Ooh, sync. We have misdirection. That should be fine, right? Feeling misdirection stomps on this ID. Um, I don't know. It's been a while. Okay, that's a bad hand. That's the worst hand I think we've started with in either of these games, including our mulligans. Unless we just go indexing, which I don't think we will. So what I'm scared about, I'm scared about Sansan into like, oh no, you can't do that. Shit. There's the indexing respect. 
But yeah, we need to open with economy here. We have no diesel, we have no Proco, no Gamble, no Dirty, nothing. Oh, we do have Dirty. Do we Dirty Laundry HQ? We can't steal Bologna. I think we do. Oh, this is such a trash hand. That's such a bad hand. That's such a bad hand. Oh my god. You can't do worse than this. <laughs> Pink Warrior versus Dave Firewater. I gotta, I gotta get that smurf down sooner than later. So the problem is like if we run to this and they do like reversed or hard hitting news into economic warfare, we lose the game. So I think we have to play on low credits until we we figure our life out. But this is so bad. There's like no good double install. I think we have to just draw one and throw out. Oh, that's so bad. Oh no. That's trash. Yikers. I believe. Yeah, we can do it. It's Rashida. So, yeah, when you think there's a Rashida, it's even harder to like dirty laundry HQ. Oh, subliminal. That's a cute card again, right? Like, incentivizes them to run. And any deck that can punish that, so that's free value. Okay. I think we're pawning one of these. Shit, okay. So we can like dirty, no, we can't run and then install Proco. I think we just click, click Proco. You know you want to run, subliminally. That's really bad. That's really, really bad. And there's a chance that actually clicking to six is more correct because that gives us flexibility next turn. And now we've committed to starting with Bubkiss. And they're on like subliminal early double Rashida jam in remote. She's so annoying. Shows up in every deck because it's so good. It's a fundamentals card. It's so powerful in the early game. It's still powerful in the late game. I don't think it's annoying. It's good that there's cards that you want to put in remotes that aren't agendas that you feel good about protecting. I think that's really good for this game. Oh, this is so fucked. This is such a salami. But she doesn't need J How? Yeah, to some extent. She does some of what J How does. Drawing three clicklessly is so important to make sure that you can have a fast game plan. Because otherwise you can click the draw. Like I just wish we had one more credit so we can install both of these. We can't. I'm not good enough shaper play to know what's to do here. Okay. Apparently not. So we'll get rid of this. I think we get rid of the dirty laundry. We're not gonna be running in a long time. Double assignment chip open. Oh man, you're scared of that one. Okay, they can score Bologna at least. Ugh, we're off to the races now. Now we're gonna witness our full power. How is it so bad? We have like five good pawn targets. What's happening? Uh, we didn't get this thing down yet. This is so bad. Flying the Y all seeing that? Yeah, if that happens, we lose. Ah, uh, it's a QPM. That means they're probably on a Raven, which uh, we can imp this, I guess. I think. But yeah, we'd lose the Fly on the Wall. We can't play around it. Okay, that's something. Oh my god, still though. Also, I don't know if y'all noticed, the last streams that we uploaded, there was no mouse cursor. Did nobody notice that? Or does that not matter? Because you just like straight up couldn't see my mouse cursor. Because it was disabled. <laughs> Hakamatsu will win you the game. Oh boy. So this so far has been like, what, a, an IPO? Oh, that's fine. That's bad. I wish they probably wanted to score better cards than this. You noticed that, right? There's not a comment on it. Be like, yo, dude, your, your shit's broken. Pawn the mem chips? Oh, yeah, we'll pawn the daily cast first. But yeah, we definitely have to pawn something just to be relevant. I thought it was a style choice. Oh, it's a garbage style choice. I think we chose that because it was that way because of the, the, the charity tournament and we just forgot to fix it. 
Okay, guys, y'all, we're back in it. You're ready for this? Turn six shaper, let's go. Yeah, it's going to keep yams here. It's, it's rubbish. They definitely want something better here. And now, unless it's an NGO front, we can start interacting with them. Well, let's go. Can force some reses? Yeah, let's go for it. So that's a Raven. Uh, I'm okay with this. No. Two QPMs are out. How bad could this be? I don't know. Wait, should you have gotten a Haley install there or did they change things? No, we did. Yeah, they changed things. Uh, Harbinger no longer eats a Haley install. They changed that. Uh, Nisei changed that like a year ago. It's a very important change. Okay, now we're gonna hit like a data ward or something. No, they have no money. What is this? Okay, I guess we're misdirectioning. Do we still have Bologna credits? Yeah, interesting to be Harbinger. Yeah, it's a really big deal for the list. And it was such a big deal because cash rotated around the same time. Give or take. Like the purge change? Yeah, it's actually a fundamentally very important change. So if we steal this, we can't uh, clear all the tags. Okay, thinking. So we'll be down on three credits. We could Proco on four. No, we need two clicks, thinking. So we need uh, we need exactly two clicks. I think we're one credit short here. We should stim hack this, but I was a coward. Can we float a tag? I feel like a tag will be disastrous if they uh, all sing IS. I don't think we need to take this. I think we can wait. Oh, I also forgot they were powerful. They're strong tags. Okay, so we just stim hack that next turn. No cash and bin? Uh... No, no cash and pin. They played a subliminal messaging? They have two of them. Pink Warrior has never a DB score of 2324, a true veteran. Yeah, if we had cash, we could consider putting it in. We don't. We've been drawing really weird. So I think we just stim hack this after we proco a bit. They click to five, so we get Beth. Fuck. I was like, let's draw so we don't lose an indexing here. The misdirection is just such a problem for the list. Uh, take a tag. And then there's no point tracing this because clearing the tag is cheaper. Why not just indexing? Because uh, I want to keep the blown off the table because if they score it, they get their money back. And if they score this, they're on game point, which is terrifying. Because in theory, they can fast advance out the last points. I don't know how they're going to do it, but they could. Yeah, this just absolutely goofs on sync. I wonder if they're on like best defense or something. But then we can always just like simul chip before they can air clock down. So whatever. I'm not boosting here because we're going to use the five credits on the actual Bologna. Cool. Still got the credit lead. Technically, you're still not losing in indexing. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good way to look at it. Do they throw the book at us? Because we just clear it for four. No, they don't. And we got to keep off their uh, their subliminals. So like, I wonder if we just run our archives to just like fuck with the subliminals. I don't know if they have agendas. If they have agendas, they wouldn't have jammed these. I think we pawn an Akamatsu. Yeah, I think we pawn an Akamatsu. Not running is like a two credit play. I think we will run. Oh, now it's a bit too late in the turn. Let's see, I don't know. Ah, Archives is bad. Oh, okay. So we pay one for them not to get money? Okay. But now it's rezzed, which is a mistake. Like that's not good for us. That's a really cool include. 
Okay, that's just a shutdown subliminal. It's probably not optimal. Oh, we also just like, uh, wow, we can parasite that. I forgot how good that is. Parasite it? Yeah, we can. We could actually could have that turn by like simul chipping uh, Harbinger, which might have been correct. But now we can parasite it here and go for an index, which I like. I like the the looks of that one. So chance we win. Nothing really to pawn, I don't think. We're going to get a card draw. Parasite of Thimble Rig. I didn't know I wanted to do that until it's toast. Until today, until toast. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, it'll work. See ya. Install another program from your grip? Oh, I should have planned that better. Actually, hold on. Hold on. Okay. Oh no, because we didn't trash anything. I was going to SMC for something, but then we have to trash something. I don't want to do that. Uh, no. Yeah, that's a bummer. We can do this once, I guess. Oh, that's better. That's much better. But now we're not going to have the indexing threat. Because if, if we hit a Raven here, it's really bad. I will try it. I don't think this is great. Could have pawned the misdirection. Yeah, I really value the misdirection. It's, I think, the most important card we have. So this is trace seven. So we're just going to clear the tag for three. Oh, to reinstall it. Yeah. Scorched Earth. Wow. That would be lethal in some cases. IP block, that's fine. F to P, that's fine. And then a lot of annoying ice. Wow, okay. I think it's the best if they draw the Scorched Earth. So at least we have a bluff here. Oh, that's a bad indexing. F to P is annoying to deal with. Turnpike is less annoying. I guess we'll clear this tag. I don't know. This could be bad for us. It's a lot of ice. Yeah, we don't deal with a lot of those sentries. Okay, so they don't know that we buried an agenda or not. So they don't know whether to draw in or not. So they have a scorch. They just put the IP block down. I think we pressure HQ here. We want to make sure the subliminal's on fire. Let's give them three copies of the same card. Go absolutely mad trying to figure out what's going on. Pawn that. Beth gives us a card. Diesel's good. Kind of want a Dirty Laundry HQ. They also are a smaller deck with fewer points. I don't know what this is. This easily could be a Bologna Brewing. A Brulona, if you don't mind. I don't have a good read on what their ice is. I don't think I want a Dirty Laundry blindly. Sink Scorched Earth, Sea Source incoming. Yeah, it's just not, I don't know. In this matchup, Sea Source Scorched Earth will actually kill because we're not Anarch and we have no tech. But I, I think Scorched Earth is really bad in the meta. F2P, okay. Salt Runner to the grip and tag. So we have to pay four. Or we boost break. No. Why does it not let me do this? It's not implemented? That would break all of it. Sentries are really hard. Sentries are really difficult. Thimble rig. All right, so the positionality of their ice really matters. So we made a run to stop their subliminal messaging. The subliminal messaging looks nice in this list. Yeah, it only showed me the subs. No prompt to break when I clicked on it. Like, I think this deck is just trying to, like, glacier up. Wow, with three subliminals and then, like, pop off with the Sea Source Scorch, maybe? But for what it's worth, this, you can't play three in a turn. Well, you could. It would just be bad. So, like, if you have to fire all three of them, you get three to hand. You play one, and then you either keep the other two, which hurts your hand size. So I don't think you do. So having all three in there is, I don't think, that big of a deal. Unless they're, like, do some ridiculous Jeeves thing. And even that's probably not that good. This is what we wanted. 
Our MU is a bit goofed. So I think we just install a cache and then throw at the clot. And it says is for. And we'll take the money because we ran. But in theory, this also could be like a reversed. Pink just clicks for three. Fucking hell, this is going to be annoying. This is where you want an R&D interface or some sort of pressure, like a medium, and we don't have it. So like we have to just hope. Uh, they've drawn three cards since, so their bottom two are turnpikes, I think. But like at some point, we have to not run. And Ika is going to be a, a liability too. This is not going to be fun. I think we have to run this. I think we do run this. Isn't Serb unrotate this format? Yeah, Serb's here. Yeah, we have it. Don't forget ASOPs. Oh, I did. Whoops. Yeah, I did. Thank you. Stim back into this? Yeah, we should. We definitely should. Uh, we'll pawn this one. This is uh, pawning. This helps with the MU, but like it mean, we want to pawn this when we want to sign chip. And I'm not too smart to think about it. Yeah, I think we do stim hack this. Our three hand size is actually a problem against scorched. Ooh, maybe this stim hack is going to be the issue. And if we had an SMC, we could use it too. Maybe we do simul chip in. Maybe this was a mistake. We probably should have got rid of this. Because then we can use the stim hack money if we have it. I don't know. Shape replays hard, man. Because now three hand size is, is actually a really big issue. This second stim hack probably is a mistake. Because now if we get ever less money and they sneak out a CU or whatever, or a C source, we lose threat level alpha. This is a surveyor. Oh, there you go. That's the one. Oh, this is actually the cheapest breaker in the game to break it. So data ward, that's all their money. So we have a tag. So this is why they have two thimble rigs in their deck. So you must three pay three or take a tag. Uh, we're going to take the tag and then we're going to break this for, uh, for five credits. Boom. It's not that bad. It's really not that bad. Bologna. Yeah, there you go. That's a Bologna. And then, of course, these are bad tags, so we're going to misdirection them. And now we're on game point. Okay, now if they do C source us somehow, we die. They have a Scorch in hand. QPM time? Oh, man. Okay, also the thing about the list is they have very few agendas because they're only at 18 points. So it's going to be like 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 probably like two foods. So, like, the fuck do we do? Just glacier up until we get another indexing and then pray. Yeah, I really wish we had a medium or some sort of multi axis outside of indexing, but indexing will probably close the game. Can I have my clicks, please? Thank you. That's good. They're going to start getting their subliminals back. There's not much we can do about it. So we have three hand size, so we don't have a double install here. So I think we just do gamble casts. Like we just hold on for money and hopefully they don't see source us. Or they can't. Ah, oh, triple subliminal. Must run. Okay. Yeah, so they have two more in their hands. So, oof, they heard our indexing. But what's their economy here, Sweeps Week? They played a Sublimino, which is like clicking for a credit, but it gets a card out of hand. So we really want to run. I think we run HQ here. I think we can support it. I don't want to pawn anything. Uh, Beth is going to be good. It gives us credit. Misdirection, it's, it's absurd. Exactly this mashup. Yeah, so just run HQ. We can afford to play four. Keep them off the subliminal. But three subliminal might be too much. I don't know. I don't know if we get to get our Ika out here. 
Okay, I'm gonna try and click on this and see if that actually works. Oh, it does. Oh, they're totally right. Oh, it works. Scorched Earth, okay, we knew about that. Oh, there's the indexing, okay. We probably should have dirty laundry there, actually. That's a mistake. It's definitely a mistake. Oh, I love F2P and Acme. Yeah, it's nice. It's a good card. Sync just needs best defense. I, I think so, but even then, it's it's really hard because we just simul chip it back. I don't think the best defense does anything. So we have to win, or basically we have to like tilt and go all R and D and hope we win before they do. Which on twenty credits, feeling okay about it. Like another data ward will be fine. Yeah, we'll just go for it. If this doesn't work, obviously we just peel the tags off. This doesn't really tax as much. Just. Okay, so this so far doesn't matter if we have to go back in. We can let this fire. This could matter. This is IP block. Yeah, that's an IP block. That's one credit. Cool. Now this will matter on the comeback, but we break two for anyways. So if we see an agenda here, we win. Oh, not entirely true. If it's the last QPM, we actually have to like figure shit out. Hey, look, a wild Andre, what a pleasant surprise. I mean, he's probably basically done. Yo, Corey, how's it going? Okay, so that's it. That's an exploded police. That's GG. The QPM, I think we could have got as well. Okay, add install card to the grip. That doesn't matter. Oh, no, it does for IP block. Oh, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Okay. Man, we had such a bad start there. They really, like, if they jammed out any other agenda in their deck besides QPM, we'd be in such a bad spot. I guess we could have broke this. We didn't need to do the tags like that. I just didn't want them to bounce the lady. Do we have access to another lady? Mm, yes, so we actually could have let that fire. Man, Lady's just so good. We paid like nothing for barriers. Well, in theory, we boosted that one, but it was still heck. <laughs> That's confusing when we clear the tags just to get through that. That's exploded, please. That's two more points. Good game. We didn't see sea sorts. We didn't see actually any legitimate tag punishment. We saw no economic warfare. All we did is see is a scorched and thimble rigs. Uh, so I didn't have to bother with the F to P. Three H H H N. Yeah, they might actually be on like uh, economic warfare. Otherwise, you could bounce the fractor. I had another in archives. Just seemed simpler, I guess. Yeah, it was just a simpler. Yeah, I wasn't expecting Splotus. I, I, I'm with you. i with you with that, Terrence. Like, I, I didn't expect that at all. I expected them to be on foods and have a smaller agenda density. Yeah. Windex is back. The Miracle Cleaning Solution. Man, indexing is like... It's just so many bad beats where it's like the corp is struggling and you'd be like indexing Steel 4 GG through a single eyes. Food is a bit useless with Bologna. Yeah, you're you're totally right. Yeah, food is totally useless in this list. Without the three-pointers, yeah, that's stupid. Uh, stupid's a bit harsh. It's not good, yeah. I think I'm used to the other lists that were like running food and news team and QPM and then made it very difficult. But yeah, Bologna doesn't need that. It was rough for me in misdirection. No big agendas early for what you're setting up. I just don't think... I don't think there's any good way to deal with misdirection. Like, no one home doesn't do it. No one home doesn't deal with two ice in a row that well. Hey, Pink, thanks for the game as well. 
Yeah, I just don't think there's any good tech for misdirection, right? Right, like you can't best defense it. They'll just simul chip it. I don't know. It's really hard. They're going for the credit differential agendas, but I think Cyberdeck Sandbox has all but replaced Exploded. Yeah, I think so. Best defense? I don't know, Dej, because as soon as you best defense it, we have priority. So then we just simul chip it and install from hand with Haley, even on top of it. But like we just simul chip it before you can play Arc Lockdown. Like it doesn't matter. That's my least favorite card in the current pool. Interesting. It's cool that it takes two clicks like that. I like. I like that as a start because then it pressures the turn where like we can't do this and do this. Like that's a good start. But yeah, it's just sync is such an unfortunate matchup. Got plenty, but you sat back. I, I. Because there's a lot of stuff. There's like the tag one that trashes a card. Uh, best defense always works. Um, yeah. Keegan Lane with Data Raven works also. Yeah, but they just, they, I know. Keegan Lane with that, but none of that works against Simul Chip. Best defense plus a blacklist. This is bad since you need to defend a blacklist. Yeah, blacklist is actually interesting, but then yeah, you need to go wide. I think blacklist is not bad. Bad times counters misdirection. I don't think bad times is legal anymore. Do Great Mail Bologna is the only real six agenda suite? Yeah, you can also go fewer agendas and run just like, you know, like most people did in the old uh, 40 card minimum NBN decks and just run three six pointers and then run like uh, whatever you want. Generally, it's a uh, hive mind or whatever it's called. I, don't, I never remember the name of that card. It's not hive mind, echo chamber. We got there. Just that sense shuts down so many tag heavy strategies trivially or for zero with no real counterplay. It's not for zero. You do have to pay for per tags. Um, but you're right. In terms of like a silver bullet, it's very, very, very strong. As opposed to things like paper tripping, which nobody played because they were too weak. Like that's the, it's really hard to uh, find a, a middle point where it's like, it's a good enough card in the matchup, but it doesn't destroy everything. Imagine government takeovers in NBN. I don't think it'd be that good, right? Like you already have a Beal. That's basically a government takeover. I feel in Salvage Mem, the Cyberdeck Sandbox should be the priority two points to play. Yeah, yeah, I think it's really good. And then you can run more uh, virus support, which seems really important with medium around. Does eat into MU, which is significant. Yeah, this does eat into MU. Just imagine, and like this is such a big deal. Imagine that there's a good shaper console. Imagine at some point they make a good shaper console because like none of these lists are running consoles. They're just like three Akamatsu. That's good enough. Like imagine a good shaper console. And like you could just play Maya. You could play Maya for the three MU or two MU or whatever and imagine it does nothing else. But uh, oh my God, once shaper gets a good console, and maybe all we need is to print like one or two more Shaper events so that uh, in faction, Anacom seems a bit better. I don't know. Pink says Anacom is good. Anacom's not bad. It's just like Shaper needs, I think, one or two more uh, pieces of events for that to be really strong. I feel like Anacom's better out of faction. I feel like it counters getting 10 tags in a turn well. Well, it doesn't counter one tag every other turn. Yeah, it, it, it's exactly it. It's better against the big tags, which it's a problem because it absolutely destroys that archetype. Super Corridor and Anacom are very good. Super Corridor is not competitively good. So I think it's not good. I guess you're all right rating Misdirection, so Maya might be good. Yeah, but like Maya's fine. But like if you're taking a single tag with Maya turn with Misdirection, it's probably not good. <laughs> so imagine a good shape for console. It's easy if you try. Also for indexing list, turntable is amazing strong. Yeah, I think every the, the big consensus is the best shaper console is largely turntable. And indexing is a very good argument for why it gets even stronger. I think that's a really good point, Daijin. Because like sometimes you just see a one-pointer and that's like better for your game plan than seeing a two-pointer. Listen, I spent a full month trying to break my brain into making Super Corridor work. I worked so hard. Yo, Terrence, did you do algo trading? Because man, I want a good reason to play that, that bad card. Shaper one, two cards away from being just very overtuned. Yeah, maybe. But that's the kind of the thing that I'm excited for. And like Anakam represents that. It's like, it's not there yet in terms of like power level that probably people would be excited to play it, but it represents a different Shaper archetype. And I think that's really, really cool. Like the idea that it represents an event heavy Shaper, which a lot of Shaper decks just aren't that. And I, I like that idea that it, it, it widens what's possible. Cash is back, so now you can use those credits to hit the super corridor amounts. Ooh, easy game. I work so hard, and then Anarch just installs Poimo Keiko. Yeah, I know. I feel like something like Personal Workshop still existed. Super corridor might be okay. It does, Corey. It, it does. Um, You do. It's uh, Paola's Cafe, no? Super corridor, brain cage, game day for amazing draw. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't feel like draw is the issue when you got... 
Like Proko seems so good. I don't know. I'm not the best shaper player for what it's worth. Like a lot of this is just me looking at tournament play and understanding the card pool. But uh, I don't know. I don't experiment enough with shaper. Well, I, classically we do on this channel. Just we never refine. We always poke, which is still good enough fun. The niche that Personal Workshop has is letting you spend X credits. Oh yeah, Palace doesn't let you do that, does it? Do you think if there was no Stimac that people would still play Personal Workshop? I don't think they would. Paola's Cafe ain't no personal workshop. Yeah, I'm not sure if they would. I really don't know if they do. Zandorius did an amazing woo. It gives you one credit a turn? Yeah, it does, but so much other stuff does. And it only gives you one credit a turn, and it forces you to install things when you don't want to. I don't know. Is there a Zeki for 0MU? Sure. But there's a lot of other Zekis for 0MU that don't see play. Can you play one game with what you think is the least competitive ID? No. <laughs> Hold on. Yes and no. So this is the issue that happens. Firstly, whenever we play IDs that don't do anything, and then I'm in a matchup which is a competitive matchup, that is no fun. At that point, I start floundering. I realize I just have to click for credits. And then I not only do I feel like I'm not having a good time, but I feel like the content is bad. Right, like when we play when we play against a deck that's like clearly on fourteen credits and it's going to economic warfare us into hard hitting news, and I'm like clicking for credits with a, with a I think the worst ID in my personal opinion is um is uh the savvy the skip tracer. On the runner side, like it just feels bad because we're not doing anything. We're not doing anything unique. So we're literally not doing anything. We're playing 12 influence on an awful ID. Now on the corpse side, you do have New Angeles Soul, which honestly might not be the worst ID. Wait, it has to be, right? Because it's blank. But is there an ID that's worse than blank? Oh, man, that's cool. It's the best way for Andre to run straight into a grindy. Exactly. Like, I run into an opponent where it's like, if I had a good, like, it's, I don't know. Oh, it, it just absolutely goofs me up so many times. Apex is the least competitive ID. Definitely not. 100% not. No. No. There's no way. Let's see the worst IDs. Is there any way to sell just a legal card pool? Is there a sort by legal card pool? I don't know. We'll do release state. That's probably close enough. Skip Tracer is still better than Apex. Skip, you can install it at insane speed. No, you can't install it at insane speed. Skip Tracer is so bad. Custom Biotics. Played Nero deck. Nero's not that bad. Nero's just not great. But Nero's not awful. Like, Nero has a, a relevant uh, ability. It will fire sometimes. Okay, here we go. Fine, fine, fine. This is not good, but it's not awful. Like, it, it's... It's better than clicking for credit. Whatever. Fine. Okay, we're doing it. We're going through all of them. Uh, fine. Fine. A bit boring for me, but fine. F great. Boring, but fine. Fine. Boring, but fine. Good. Good. Boring. Very boring, but not bad. Very cool. Very boring, but not bad. Good. 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 Good boring i don't know smoke like there's so many that are not like it's it's pretty good Los is fine agon fusion is great alice is fine steve is good isla is boring good 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 and here we go where is she freedom great like these are all good nat is boring but honestly fine there's reasons to play nat akiko is also kind of boring but i don't know, just the card pool doesn't support her i thought you didn't like spark uh, spark is okay it's not amazing uh simon x is like fun like, it's the idea there is always fun to chase after it, even though it's not there. Harvest Court's fine. Do you know what actually one I think is really bad? For what it's worth, I think Fisk actually might be worse than a blank ID, but you can always treat Fisk as a blank ID. Now, there are some times where Fisk can win you the games, but I think it's largely really bad. Uh, Saul obviously is blank, so that's the, st the standard. I think Apex is good. No, Apex is not the worst. There's worse than Apex. Uh, Adam is fine. Sunny's fine. Jez is okay. Okay, Nero's okay. This is actually one of the worst ones because um, it's very hard to get value from it. But even if it was blank, it's a 45-17, so it's better than Soul. So we're already winning here. Uh, this is the worst. This is so bad. It is 40 card minimum, starting good, 12 influence, no idea. Now, this card would be sick with very few changes. Change that word from Icebreaker to any program. As soon as you do that, this gets a lot better. You can clicklessly install your, your, your piggy bank. You can clickly install cash for, for free. You can clicklessly install all these like uh, support cards. I'd honestly be very excited about this if this didn't say Icebreaker on it.
right? Like if this didn't say icebreaker, it'd be cool. But now what are you doing? What are you doing for icebreakers? There's one good play in con. It's stim hack into femme fatale, but you have to pass a piece of ice. So you already have to install a breaker. And if you're doing the whole like bird flip d res thing, which is obviously what they want you to do here, you're way better playing Los. You're way better playing Los. Like that package is expensive. d resing ice is not that good. Like I feel like she can't even do the best thing that she was designed to do. And Los has 15 influence. I don't know. I think like this would be a really fun card, even if this was Shaper, but I love the fact that it's run based, so that makes it criminal. If this had 15 influence and if this said program, if you did that, I would play Khan. She should even have a link. She's a skip tracer. Fucking skip the trace. Let's go. Kate is uh, not legal. I remember trying to make Khan work, tried to have 2x Sahasara, but somehow on top of having expensive install costs, the bird breakers are too expensive to break with. Yeah. Uh, you do that in Los, you actually are okay. You do that in Los, you're fine. Michael, big boy reboot idea. It did I don't think the big boys rebooted this one yet. Um, maybe they have, but like I, you have to change a couple numbers on this for it to be okay. Blackguard run amok was fun. Oh man, Blackguard is fun though. Still def worse than Khan? No, still have 15 influence. I'll take a blank ID with 15 influence over a blank ID with 4012. I play 46 card decks. You think I care about this 40? <laughs> Uh, anyways, I'm getting too fired up in it. I like your ability to be once per turn instead of the first time. Oh, that too. Yeah, you. I was trying to figure out what you mean, but Mercalli, mean, that's a good point. The first time is also incredibly limited. If it was once per turn, you'd have control over when you do this. So you have very little control. You have to already pass ice, which means you have to be set up to get value from this, which like in theory, I think there were some design ideas where you play this with some of those like weird bypass cards that are no longer legal in Terminal Directive or like Tracker, which kind of makes sense. So you get a Tracker down early to set you up, but none of that stuff has been proven to be any good so far. Uh, maybe it needs a bit more support or tinkering. I don't know. Sanjay won with Khan at the beginning of the year. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay. Like, you can do stuff with it, but, like, I just don't see any reason to play this when the things that it wants to do, other people can do better, I think. Grendel's probably worse than Khan. Grendel was, not, was actually a top-tier idea when it came out. Grendel is competitive. Was competitive. I'm surprised it's not a 40-card deck, but, like, Grendel did tournaments. Oh yeah, and then ran into some constellation ice that made my con deck very sad. Exactly, like it's so bad, and it's a run based ID too, which are very few of them. So if you don't have economic advantage, a lot of the run based IDs are a problem. If you play against acid spam where they don't have ice, it's literally a blank ID. There's just so many reasons why this is rough. I don't know. Like you can make an ID like this, like without changing the twelve, you can make this this first time. You no, that's probably too good. Shit. But even if it's like on successful run, install a card. Even if there's no cost reduction, like. That would probably be fair. That wouldn't be that much different than Haley. But you do a run-heavy deck. I don't know. Maybe that would be crazy. I'm thinking about that. It sounds a bit bit strong. There's a Cyber Trooper Aesop's Con deck that's fun. Not good mind, but fun. Yeah, so I, I believe that. I just think you could probably do that better at a Los. I don't know. Art's really good. It's a shame. It's a shame that the Falcons were not good. Uh, this is... Uh, this upsets me, but I wish it was good. I want this to be good. I want to play a good deck. Omar is really good. PU is banned. Like, there's very few bad IDs. And this is, like, the one standout one to me to be like, oh, no. Oh, no. She had linked the B&E breakers would be nice with her. Oh, yeah. That's a really big deal, too. The B&E breakers would be so good with her. But then she needs to build two link. And then if you're doing the B&E breakers, like, obviously, if you're doing the B&E breakers well, you probably play Geist. But Geist probably doesn't play those. So, like, that would be really cool with Khan. Two of them do cost a credit. That would be sick. But it's only the first time. And then you have to use the breakers to get breakers on the table. And there's no good ways in faction to get good tempo out of installing things. It's not like we have, I don't know, uh, auto scripter anymore. What's the idea when you lose your money on Ice Encounter? That is Nasir who is rotated. But despite Nasir being very hard to play and probably not great when he came up pop-up window was in the meta and vanilla and quandary and stuff like that uh this is a very potent id and you have a lot of cool ways and nasir plays like any unlike anybody else nasir is kind of like geist in a certain way well geist maybe interacts with us may way more niche part of the card pool nasir actually offered a play style that's unlike everything else and lets you like it's really satisfying when it works i, I think nasir is really cool design and remind and it's like I don't know. I wish we had more design like this, which actually tr changes how you look at the card pool in a very, very big way. But I understand that's very hard to design like this. Uh, the Foundry is not good. We talked about this last time I streamed because it was really cool when you twin somebody into uh, 36 damage Merlin. But um, it's it just never was good. 
it thinned your deck. Having a lot of ice in your hand never was really impactful for besides the twins. I guess right now it's a bit better with things like Helheim servers, which I guess also subliminal messaging is nice with that too. I don't know. Competitive, 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 competitive. Okay, competitive, very competitive, competitive, competitive. Like, there's not a lot of bad options anymore. I got third in Nasiri's store champ. Yeah, Nasiri can be cool. Nasiri actually does stuff. Idea was the best idea ever. Oh yeah, we're making friends out here, aren't we? <laughs> Fucking poisonous. Says the guy with the IG. You have an IG tattoo? Fuck off, really? I remember seeing a quest complete silhouette deck ages ago. Oh man. Yeah, silhouette's fine. Silhouette's interesting. Like she has card support. That's not good. Like Wari is fun. Expose can be fun with Blackguard. If you get that down, it's pretty silly, but you can do it. I always bring this story up. We had a, a player who was new to our meta, who was a newer player, and it was at a store championship or regionals. It was like a competitive event, and they made the top eight or top 16 cut, and everyone was super surprised because the players were really new. They were playing Silhouette and like Grendel or something. And so we went to the dude and was like, yo, what's going on? How's your Silhouette deck? What's happening? Like, it's clearly working. I'm so excited for you. And his response was, I play Haiti Shard and access everything from archives. It's been winning me like all my games. Because no one played around just like Haiti Shard back when they keep, you know, cards with Jackson and Archives. And that was just carrying him through the whole tournament, um, which is so cool. I'm glad that you could do that. I do, bud. Oh, no way. Break and enter suite feels pretty bad. No way to boost strength unless you have an elaborate support for them or you draw most of your deck and then you're ready to start running. Yeah, Beanie Suite was like cool with Geist because obviously you get that, that boost and you can install a lot of them and they don't take up MU. Like that was actually the way to play Geist back when Geist came out. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of creativity. And like... I think that's something that excites me so much about Netrunner um, is that when you have, and this is about any game, when you have a way to play the game where your resources are different than the way that the game sold you your resources. And I don't mean resources like cards, like connections. I mean like the idea that when you play max, now your cards are your health pool. And when you're playing an aggressive max, you have to keep that in mind. Or like when you're playing um, Geist and then like your break and enter suite became the currency that you leverage. Or like when you're playing Freedom and then the viruses become the currency you leverage. Like that sort of stuff I really, really like. I'm a big fan of that. I saw a really good Haiti Shard deck a while ago. Dang, I wish I remember what it was. It might have had, uh, oh, what's it called? Oberth in it? No. That console. That console that gives you hand size for tags. Someone has an IG tat. I guess they can tell people to have. <laughs> they can tell people they have a prison tat. <laughs> Got him. That's really good. It's probably long rotated at this point. Yeah, probably. I love the design of Nasir. Yeah, Nasir is the same idea. Like you have to evaluate your resources differently, and that changes what cards are good. It's it's so exciting to play games like that. I I really like that sort of design. It changes the value of the resources that you've held so dear to you. Where it's just like, oh, your credits are technically useless maybe in this matchup. Because like Faust is honestly a, 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 a probably an overtuned implementation of that with the card support. But the idea that we said like, okay, now it's cards that deal with breakers. It ch obviously flips the whole game. Unfortunately, Faust was too good, and there's no reason not to do it. But like that sort of design, I'm a big fan of. Remember that Dean versus Dan Hades shard game at Worlds? I kind of do, actually. I do kind of remember that. Feb and Nexus were a great bypass to the ID ability. Yeah, 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 they were good. There's a lot of good ways to do Nasir. Yeah, Nasir, Nasir slaps. Nasir is like the kind of like jank that I love to play because I love stuff that are not competitive, but they do something wildly different as opposed to like, this is just a worse version of something else that I know like, oh, if I did Los, I'd do this better. That's my rant. Anyways. I'm glad to be able to get fired up and talk about this stuff. Andre, make a good fast deck. It's really hard modernly. The card draw is a struggle, but then once you get through your deck, there's nothing you can do. So you have to win quickly, which means you have to do like Apocalypse and then like uh, Encore or whatever. I have a years long effort to make Kamala deck based on use of Masazi. It's close to being fantastic, but everyone seems to be running Cyberdeck Sandbox and 3x CBS for some reason. Yeah, it's because it's good. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be an issue. It's going to be a struggle. Nasir is not legal. No, no, Nasir rota rotated. He was part of the lunar cycle, unfortunately. I hope he comes back. But he's really hard to play without personal workshop. So, like, you need some support. You would need some support. Anywho, um, we've been streaming for a bit today. Uh, I gotta go get some lunch and stuff. But um, I, I really wanted to drop in at some point this holidays. We're not gonna be streaming tomorrow because it's New Year's. I, I wish each and all of you a happy New Year's. Obviously, it's been a hell of a year. 
Uh, hopefully things get better. Things are looking a bit brighter, so hopefully we hold on here and we get through everything. Um, otherwise, hoping you have a good holidays. We'll be back next year. We'll be back next week on a Thursday. And uh, it's really had a good year, honestly, all things considered. Like, we did a lot of streaming this year. Spent a lot of time indoors, so that was kind of good to that. Um, that was okay for that. So that was actually a real pleasure. I definitely have a, I definitely value having this community a lot. It means a lot to me to be able to hang out here and shoot the shit, play Netrunner, and commentate and do all that good stuff this year. Um, That's largely it. We'll be back next year. Hopefully you're having good holidays. Um, And we'll be back in a couple days. Celebrate the new year if you can. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to do. I'm kidding. There's not. There's a lot of stuff to do. Move to New Zealand or whatever. Thanks for helping me get to never into this year, Andre. Yo, Deadstock, absolutely my pleasure. If you got any questions you want to hang out, we'll, we'll be here for sure. Cheers, Dredge. Yeah, hey. Thanks for the stream. Have a great news. You too. Appreciate it too, man. Thanks for the games. Yeah, thanks for everything. Thanks for everything, everyone. Uh, we'll be back in a bit. Take care of y'all selves. And yeah, we'll be back next week. Thanks to everyone hanging out in chat. Everyone watching the VOD. Take care of yourselves. Everyone who played games with. Yo, we had some good games today and everyone's just chilling. Take care of yourself, huh? Ciao.